Do I want the tutorial? I assume not. Let's just not. The following documents are taken from handwritten notes of Trilby, an STP field operative, whose real name remains classified. Game over. Oh, okay. I thought I was. I was like, what? That was what I thought as I stood and watched Defoe Manor collapse into the flaming ash. Wasn't. The ordeal was over. Oh, I have control over this now. It's five days cost us so much. Philip and AJ paid with their lives. They were the fortunate ones. Jim Fowler was expelled from school for truancy. A bright future in tatters. <laughs> Simone Taylor took to the bottle. Her broadcast became slurred. Her eyes hollow and unwelcoming. She soon vanished from television screens. As for me, I had to return to a life as a cat burglar, but I had been forever tainted by my time in that wretched house. Hello? Would you, excuse me? Excuse me? Do you require something? Are you just gonna stand there? I think he is just gonna stand there. I, I, need, I need the keyboard, Parker. The memories of my possession came back in my nightmares. Every night that I was there again, in the mansion, staring through unfamiliar eyes as Philip died at my hands, I became con convinced that William John Defoe was not at rest, but someday he would return for me. I became so terrified of invisible enemies that I forgot about the tangible ones. Trilby caught! Infamous thief! Captured in police sting! Two stow, miserable years after Defoe Manor, a barrage from truncheon blows taught me a harsh lesson in reality. I woke up in the kind of filthy cell I assumed would be my new home. <laughs> yeah, Philip kind of, yeah, yeah. But then he came, the man from the government with his nervous smile, offering an alternative, the STP, the Special Talent Project. It hadn't been that much earlier than I would have sooner died than entered an obligation with anyone. At least of all the government. Had Defoe Manor changed me so much? Whatever my reasons, with my past behind, resolved to give my new superiors nothing to complain about. Spent a year and a half completing assignments, developing contracts, building a reputation. And then the past caught up. Dang, we're almost at six hours of streaming. In the summer of 1997, I became concerned about Simone Taylor's mental well-being. Papers were reporting her virtual break continual breakdown. She became a virtual recluse. I have no idea if my appearance would assist or hinder. I had, however, after all, deliberately allowed her to think me dead. Presumably she knew differently now, after all the media coverage of my arrest. But I would expect her to be bitter about my subterfuge. On balance, I decided that a meeting with an old friend would most likely be beneficial after I came to her apartment building in a warm, stormy night and braced myself for the encounter. Look at that walk. Oh my god, you press- you move one tile at a time. What? That, that can't be right. Oh! Oh, you just let it go. Okay weird so it's keyboard driven inside the other ones what did I knew do next what I don't understand the word what oh no it's we text adventure now I, I couldn't pick that open it's a knock I knocked sharply upon Simone's door Scream. I don't understand the word scream. Okay, this is a classic. I don't understand the word fuck. <laughs> stop. I don't even know how to stop. Knock better. I don't understand the word better. Knock. Knock. Still no response. The doorman assured me that Simone was in. I decided it was time to enter by my own methods. Pull door.
What? I reasoned that Simone could have been in trouble. And even if she wasn't, at worst, I was only playing to my reputation. I spent a few minutes feverishly picking the lock and let myself in. A few minutes? Whew. Not some master thief, are you, buddy? What? Simone's bedroom light refused to turn on. I stood in pitch darkness, the intermediate flashes of lightning preventing my eyes from adjusting. Understand the word stumble. Certainly there was something qu quite right about the room. I had to figure out what it was before I left. I can't see. Uh, what? What? That's what I meant when I said open window, by the way. It was open the things. Open curtains. I pulled open the blind. Oh. Yep, she dead. Body on the floor was undoubtedly Simone. I felt for a pulse. My hands came stained with long, cooled blood. My fingers tracked the outline of a large wound on her torso, slashed by a big weapon wielded by a big assailant. I called for an ambulance, as few dollars it would be, and left before they arrived. Due to me being a clear murder suspect, I was relieved from duty the week it, it took the Ministry of Occultism <laughs> to inspect the flat and confirm supernatural activity. Obviously, there's the Ministry of Occultism, you know, just the kind of thing MI6 has. MI, MI7, even, is the supernatural one. My supervisor simultaneously apologized and assigned me to investigate if there was a connection to the Defoe Manor incident. Merely reading those three words, capitalized on the front of a loose leaf file, brought the nightmares back with more intensity than ever good stuff. Sure enough, a field agent reported that looters had discovered and sold several artifacts from the mansion, including the wooden idol that housed Defoe's, Defoe's soul. To my surprise, no murders had been reported or committed by anyone who had come into contact with the accursed trinket. I did not find this reassuring. I quickly advised James Fowler to go into, the, into hiding. He was stunned, but agreed. Boy had sense and still respected my judgment. This done, I began following the idol's trail from the pawn shop and into the possession of one Professor Abed Chalal, Chahal, an authoritative historian. He had scheduled some kind of antique fair in his hotel in a small island at the coast of Angelisi, popular tourists. Seemingly 
Should be some artwork pieces that came with the game. Oh, yeah, I see a folder of extras, but yeah, spoilers. Jahal. Yeah, that was the name of the sh somebody on the ship, at least. Assuming the role of Scholar of Antiquities, I booked a room. <clears throat> 28th of July, which is a good day to do things. Definitely not the day that all of the other bad things happened. What a good day to be there. Um, I caught a ferry from Porthlichog in Anglesey. You're just making words up now. It arrived around 3 p.m. Clans Bronwum Islands Coastal Village. You, you British people have to stop this. It seemed a peaceful hamlet in defiance of stereotype. The locals were welcoming and told me no local legends to dissuade me from exploring the island. The Clan Brownwim Hotel was the island's center, surrounded by the forest. Made my way there on foot. Clan Brownwim. You're trilby, right? As soon as I arrived, I was greeted by a balding man in a gray anrak. I wondered if I was expected to know who he was. That depends. <laughs> Why? He just did a quick little breakdance move there. Something about occultism. Clear the fact that I was handing this on my own. I'm so glad that this is not cursive. Maybe there are still people who don't trust you, Mr. Trilby. What? I haven't stolen anything since I joined the STP. Your colorful path is not what concerns superiors. It hasn't gone unnoticed that your history with the Defoe Wraith influences you psychologically. I'm sure you resisted. But it could still cause you to act irrationally, disobey orders. Everyone just feels a little safer with someone else on the ground. I see. You can rest assured that I will endeavor to maintain absolute professionalism on this assignment. Nevertheless, I have my orders. I would suggest we keep out of each other's way and then pursue separate investigations. I'm sure I don't want to get mixed up in a reunion. Thanks, asshole. I watched him disappear around the corner of the building. I very much doubted that Lankman and I would become friends. The hotel lobby was a warm welcome. The building was certainly well maintained. There was something about it that nagged at the back of my mind, quieting my pulse. Dismiss the sensation, an act which, in retrospect, I would come to regret. He still got those elephant feet. Good evening, Terence. Re oh my God! Uh, you're here for the antique fair. I put you in room three C on the third floor. Would you just like to sign the check-in book? Oh, everyone else is also an elephant. Hello, Bathan. I'm just letting you know I'm having dinner in my room today. It's absolutely fine, Professor. Oh, it's the dude! This, I decided, was what they called the golden opportunity. Professor Chalal? Chahal? I'm afraid you have me at a disadvantage. Railby, Terence Railby, we met at Sotheby's a few months ago? Er. Oh, you don't remember me. No, no, of course I do. Terry Railby, how have you been? The astute readers already guessed that Terence Railby and the previous meeting were utter fiction. Is this dude going to be dead by the time this game? I assume everybody who is not me that we have met so far is going to die. I mean, one of the three is already dead, or one of the four is already dead, so. I had spent some time studying Chahal's movements and habits, he was, by all accounts, absent-minded. That was something I could use. I'm well, thanks. I was hoping I'd run into you. Heard interesting things about some items you're showcasing here. Certain cursed things. You do remember I freelance scouting for some wealthy collectors? Uh, yeah. Well, a client of mine has expressed an interest in relics from Defoe Manor in Buckinghamshire. The, the, the different height of the letters bothers me so much. Between you and me, he seems pretty obsessed. What remained of Professor Charles' suspicion melted away from his expression as the opportunity to make money entered the conversation. Well, I'm sure I wouldn't want to damage your professional status. Would you like to come up to my room for drinks? 
Oh, I don't want to impose. No imposition at all. Please follow me. Your room key, Mr. Railby. T. Railby. Uh. <laughs> what a coincidence, his room was just right through that door. Oh, let me introduce you. This is my personal assistant, Sahoban. She accompanies me on most of my excursions. This is Mr. Railby, an old acquaintance. Psst, sure. He's looking for information on Defoe Manor artifacts. Oh, really? Him and half the people we meet? What is it about that place? Never underestimate the attraction of a mystery, my dear. Please take a seat, Terry. We'll be right with you. Look at that old CRT. Good stuff. So, interested in ghost stories? This girl struck me as a force of a personality. I gave the matter some thought before replying. Not really. I'm just scouting about half of a client, just like I told the professor. Hmm. Now, it's strange to see someone as young as you in the antiques trade. Come to think of it, thought only old men dress like that. Rude. I'm from Reddit. Okay, that explains the trilby. I didn't catch your last name. It's O'Malley. So Han O'Malley? Couldn't be more Irish if I tried, could it? So I'd keep you waiting, dear boy. It's hard to keep up with chat. Chat is unfortunately quiet anyway, but hard to keep up with chat how fast with this. Siobhan? Really? Huh. Uh, brag about how cool I am. I don't understand the word brag. Well, aren't you a humble little thing? Talk. I was talking to myself. Ask about... Uh, artifacts. Ask... What... Scream. What do I do? What do I do? Hi. Who are you? Um... I said artifact earlier. Tell me, does a huge man in a welding mask and an apron mean anything to you? Not really, should it? Never mind. <laughs> it's a small African figure that my client wants to look into. Resembling a rather ugly tribal god. That old thing? Honestly, despite its age, it's virtually valueless. That's what I said, my client is very insistent. He's interested in the paranormal, and the idol features some of the more unlikely accounts in some of the more unlikely accounts of the Defoe Manor incident. I don't suppose I should ask questions. This man wants to take it off my hands. I don't have it on me right now. It's being kept in the hotel safe. Do hotels have safes? Perhaps we can work out a deal at the fair. I intend to display it with the other Defoe artifacts. Inwardly, I just wanted to get this mission completed as fast as possible, but I didn't want to risk a suspicion of giving off the wrong impression. That'll be fine. So, just out of interest, what else have you picked up for the mansion? Odds and ends, basically. Some silverware and ceramics. Most of a burnt rocking chair. And the painting, of course. Painting. A landscape from the wall in the mansion's lounge. Little artistic value, but the artistic features prominently defose... Manor's colorful history. Matthew Defoe? That's him, yes. Thun, she runs the hotel. Asked if she could display it in the lobby. Dun dun dun. Oh crap, I didn't even notice the freaking thing. Most common anglizations are Siobhan. Oh yeah, I have, I have, heard, I have heard of that name. I've never seen it spelled like that, though. You've gone rather pale. What? Sorry, I was just distracted by my thoughts for a moment. Lost in history, eh? Something like that. Whoa! Um, what the hell was that? Exactly! What the hell was what? You're just sitting there and you went stiff as if you'd seen a ghost. Well, starting off pretty quickly, aren't we? You didn't see it? See what, Mr. Railby? I'm sorry, I... Have to go. Something's wrong. Something's certainly wrong, yes! 
There we saw Chizo for the first time. Let's see this. My head was spinning. A sudden nausea churned to my gut. The world seemed to be pulsating. The corners of the room waving like a heat haze. Whoa. Oh! This body is here. It is something. You might say I imagined these things, and I thought it must have been the case. What was I out of my mind? Was the hotel really changing into a nightmarish twin? Is this Silent Hill? Was I the only one who could see it? Oh, it was hallucinating. It was too complex. The harsh wooden floor beneath my feet felt rough. Real enough. The horrendous stench of rotting flesh that reached my nostrils could not have been conjured by my imagination. I decided I had to find John Defoe's idol as soon as possible. If not, then at least the painting Chahal had mentioned. I'm my original series, Quiet Mountain! I was convinced that some connection lay behind Defoe man and the sudden madness. You think? I don't know. His body is here, his soul is not. Lovely place. I like the whispering. Can you hear the whispering well enough? The situation had reached the point I felt when politeness could be done away with. I couldn't insert a pick. The lock. It really is Silent Hill! The locks are broken! Oh no! Chizo! Skeleton! Blood splatters covered every wall and surface in the room as if someone had lost a fight with some horrible beast here. Metal tables and some kind of stone all showed evidence of recent slaughter. A mangled old sofa stood in the corner. What is that? Where there had been a bed, there was now some kind of stone altar, chains and manacles and Indicate this was meant for sacrificial purposes. Ugh. I stared blankly. <laughs> yeah! Valid response. I don't understand sp word spine. The head was too badly smashed and mangled to recognize. Stuck shut. I'm liking this one already. The graffiti read his body's here, his soul is not. What if there's a friend to John Defoe? Door was stuck shut. Is there a save? Ah, there is. Sure. Look outside. I can try. I can see why. I think Sun said this was his favorite. What? what why does it. When you just type open, it doesn't work. You have to type open door. Like, come on. Boards have been nailed into the window, both inside and outside. Hardly a speck of light made it through the blockage. Not everybody likes it. Yeah, I can. Oh, come on, dude. Stairwell is built from old concrete and a thick smell of damp filled the air. Still suffers from adventure game logic. I can imagine considering the other ones. Man. Man, not man. Open door. Door stuck shut. Damn it, Silent Hill doors. Open door. Nope. The panes cracked and blood stained, and wooden boards blocked the view, apparently nailed haphazardly on from outside. We're at the top of a building. Oh, come on. So it's more the strange word I saw on the wall in a bed's room. Uh, this time followed by the words love me. Blood
bloodstained stolen altar. All was dark outside the window, either through nailed up boards or thick grime on the paint. Still soft furnishings in this horrible environment, even if they were rotting and broken. This room is not used often. I stared. I think it just says stare blankly when you pick something that's not really. It'd be an ordinary hotel room. Couldn't even begin to decipher the meaning of the words. Man, not man. What the hell did it mean? Sticky yellow paint was peeling from the walls, and splatters of blood spelled out myst mystifying phrases. Remarkably, the doors seemed intact. Bring her back! Well, you've nailed her to the wall, so... It's like some sort of porcelain mannequin, but with bits missing. I couldn't see how it was attached to the wall. Blood seemed to be running down the stairs as if someone had attempted to descend them while bleeding with increasing speed. Words bring her back were spelt out on the north wall for unknown reasons. <laughs> I can't bring her back, sorry. The game says no. Trilby. Trilby, old boy. Okay. Oh, man. This perspective does not play well with four directions. Did I already go on this one? Alright. Trilby does still have problems with stairs. Stairs were the real problem, not William. Or John. Priest or prisoner, acolyte or slave, who knows? Open door. Door is stuck shut. Hello? Excuse me? Hello? Nothing on this one, huh? Hello? Do you require something, sir? No, that's my water. You have your own water. I just filled it today. Down he goes. Uh, I'm gonna assume that's a corpse. The body was that of a young, ma muscular man I hazarded. He was wearing some kind of old-fashioned military uniform, complete with blue tunic and riding boots. More to the point, his head was missing. His hands were worn down to bloody wads of flesh and bone. A collection of handwritten pages on the floor near his body. The corpse had apparently spent his last few moments of life making graffiti. Was he responsible for all the messages I had seen so far? Appeared to be notes from a diary. July 18th, Felicia and I took shelter from the storm in a decrepit old hotel in the forest. It seems to be completely deserted, so we bedded down on the floor in the lobby to s for the night. So peaceful here, the noise of the storm seems far away. Someone in the hotel has been increasingly clear that this place is not as innocent as it first seemed. Found ancient corpses and evidence of terrible deeds in several of the rooms. The storm is cleared and we intend to leave as soon as possible. July 20th. Certain that devilry is at work. Every path we take through the forest brings us back to the hotel. We spend a whole day trying to find routes to no avail. Felicia keeps talking of a demon she fancies she saw in the hotel kitchen last night. 
Felicia's dead. I was too late to help her. I saw her murderer just as, just as she did. Perhaps I'll be next. I'm beginning to understand. It's getting closer to July 28th. The murderous figure in black, the one whose body is sadly stretched into a mockery of form, is not the artifact of this nightmare. Architect, rather, this is the work of that hideous lord of the forbidden lands. Gods forgive me. Huh? This is before Slender Man, too, isn't it? Yeah, I noticed the tall, like, silver dude. I built a shrine to my captor in the lobby in an attempt to appease it. Nothing has changed. I have no more food. The horror is starting to affect my mind. I'm certain my mind is going. I imagined for a moment that the hotel had changed, become finely decorated and welcoming as it must have been in the past. I blinked and returned to its normal hateful self. The next few pages are sprinkled with blood, obscuring some of the text. What is his relationship to that disgusting beast? Is he servant or prisoner? Sometimes he acts alone, sometimes he acts at the behest of a higher power. What does he want from me? So he goes crazy and or just bleeds all over the place after July 28th. Welcome back, Pariah. Hey, he is after me now. I think it must have done something wrong. It hurts. That was the last readable entry. I decided not to take them with me. They were covered in blood and all stuck together. Yeah, you don't want that in your pocket. Yep, yeah, we're still in Silent Hill. If you caught most of what I read there, that's pretty much the most important thing. The lobby, too, had become tainted, and the painting I thought was absent. Oh crap, I missed it. Presumably it only exists in the hotel's normal form. If that was the case, I needed to find a way back there to spell the hallucination if this truly was all on my mind. The stage, I was beginning to wonder if this really all was John Defoe's doing. It didn't seem to style, somehow. What other evil could possibly be the culprit? Oh, hello, flesh cake! <laughs> doesn't understand the word cake. Someone had been tied down to the altar, flayed, and their inner had their innards removed. By the looks of the horrible claw marks and broken fingernails, they had been alive at least part way through the procedure. The glass had been smashed out of the windows and the front door. Familiar plaque across. Familiar plaque, plaque cross was smeared onto the door, to the manager's office. The pentagram had been scrawled on the north wall, and a cow's skull had been nailed in place over it. It seemed to be some kind of offering. Be sure to check the corner of the hotel. What do you mean? You mean back up here or what? No, outside? I haven't gone outside yet. Wallpaper? Bleeding walls, decay, and disuse. This room continued the alternate hotel. <laughs> it's even called the alternate area. That's very Silent Hill inspired, I must say. The alternate hotel is tradition. Open the door. Aw, oh, sweet, they got video games! Even were it in fully working order, I had far better things that I could have been doing. Appeared to be damaged with the front plate ajar and frayed wires emerging from the rear. Strangely, the screen was active and flashing blankly. The left poster was some kind of portrait of the strange masked figure I glimpsed in the hotel. The middle poster was blank, the third was smashed.
In keeping with the alternate hotel scene, the furniture looked like someone had been hurled against them with absolutely fatal force. Lying on the bar in a pool of gore was a pile of long-nosed pliers. Gonna need those. Rusty but functional. Took them with me. something from the game. That would be a good way to get electrified. Okay. It feeds. I right, look at the open door with three wooden bars. <clears throat> ah! A delicious meal. I don't understand the word delicious. There's an arrangement of uncooked meat with ribs sticking out on the center table that seemed to be attracting insects beautifully. Try not to think about what kind of meat it was. Eat it. Eat it. The fitted stink of decay was already making me rich. Consuming the stuff was just unthinkable. The words it feeds were inexplicably spelled out on the north wall. And the prerequisite bloody letters. Some fresh ribs. Mm -hmm. I don't understand the bathroom. Body had been completely flayed and still glistened wetly with blood. The hands and one of the feet were held in place around the door with six inch nails. I think I should get the meat. It's a horrible lump of the meat to take with me. If I came against anything hostile and carnivorous in this place, it would help to have something other than myself to offer it. Hooray! The kitchen doors refused to open. Well, how rude of them! Four doors, none of which seemed inviting. To the east led to the hallway. Went to the west leading to the kitchen, some kind of unisex bathroom, and another large one that someone had boarded up. A kind of flayed corpse was nailed to the place with the toilet blocking the way. Use pliers. Use pliers on nails. Nails were hammered into the boards too far. I usually can't. Oh. Okay, you can. It's Mr. Morton from Babylon 5. The hotel's exterior was corrupt as it isn't its interior. The ground beneath my feet was hard, red, and gritty like desiccated clay. Ugh. Two heads on the right were decayed down to the skulls. The one on the left was very much fresh. Its features made unfamiliar by the torment it had undergone. Aw, oh, I was loath to even go near them. Clabany Hotel. No, Clabany Hell, actually. I stared. Ah. Oh. Hotel's exterior was scripted. No, I already saw that. Taking a closer look, I noticed that there were several knot holes in the fence. The holes are big enough to offer a view of the area beyond, if I can just get closer. Peering through the nearest hole, I saw a barren expanse of harsh ground. Broken piles of rusting metal furniture. Ah, uh, very Silent Hill, yes. Cloud oh! Oh, 
Oh, there's a fence blocking the whole way. Hmm. Hey, Savage Simi. Um, it's looking great. Wait, let's book windows first. Windows were boarded up. The alternate hotel appeared to have been abandoned by everything to the horror. What do you mean you can't look in the grate? Can't go this way either. <laughs> that might have made sense in another time and place, but not then. I couldn't do that just then. He doesn't understand the word basement. Close. Oh, come on. This does control better, but... Oh, come on. Oh, wait, I haven't been in here. Oh, his door is blocked. By what? The glass has been smashed out of the windows. <laughs> I spelled what? You look cold. Oh, come on. were ideal for removing the nails. Now oh, we gotta go to the bathroom, I guess. Blip! Hello! Oh, and it's, it's gone. It feeds. Ah! There's a key in that toilet. <laughs> no! It just says no. That didn't make sense to me. Aw. He's not James. He couldn't pick the toilet lock open. None of the toilets appeared to be functional. One of them was overflowing with blood, with which let me be disinclined to investigate the others. You say so. The cracks and stains twisted my reflection into something most unpleasing. The right sink was full of blood. The left one was merely dirty. Use blood. Blood sink. Wash hands. Hands in blood. I wasn't sure how to! Did you actually use the sinks? It was unthinkable. Maybe to you. Maybe to you. The gloomy lavatories were in a state of advanced disrepair. One of the cubicle doors was hanging off its hinges. The mirror above the counter was broken. I could be wrong, but this might be before S Slender Boy. When when was? Let me look this up. Cause this was made in two thousand eight. Okay, yeah, this is before Slender Boy. Uh, see you, Savage. I stared blankly. Um, um, wait, what's that thing on the sink? What, what is the, the th There's a thing there. The counter and two sinks was covered in filth and mold. To my surprise, a brand new sealed envelope! How was I supposed to know it was an envelope? Baffled, I took the envelope. It was strangely bulky and tore it open. A white pill bottle and a note fell out into my hand. I here enclosed the note with this report. Trilby, if you're reading this, then you have seen the hotel change. 
At present, I have no idea if the alternate hotel is part of the ethereal realm, or some kind of construct, a pocket dimension. There's a definite correlation between one's level of agitation and one's tendency to reality shift. Fear is your enemy. It leaves you shining like a beacon for whatever evil brought us to this place. Oh, that's from the other guy. Enclosed is a bottle of tranquilizers for my personal first aid kit. When you find yourself shifting to the other place, take a pill and try to calm down. The real hotel will return. Well, that's convenient. Do not let it concern you. I am researching the phenomenon. Your task is to find Defoe. Good luck, Agent Linkman! <laughs> this is just a very regular thing. Pocket of the pill bottle. Well. Take a pill. Hesitantly, I swallowed a tranquilizer. Or I tipped a tranquilizer into my palm and swallowed it without water. You could drink some, you know... You could get some blood and, you know, wash it down with that. Quickly took effect. I felt the anxiety lift from the pit of my stomach, and dismal surroundings seemed to feel less imposing. I could use some of those. Then I felt that strange sensation again of lightheadedness and detachment as the world began to quiver. And I'm in the bathroom with no explanation. All the toilets with spotlets, even the hard to reach areas. <laughs> He's very thorough in expecting his toilets. I don't understand the word pee. I said use the sink. What? Whatever. All right, painting time. That door is spooky in here. Whoa! Father, why? Father, why? Father, why? Dad, why? Please. Gooby, please. I can't even walk over that way. I couldn't take my pills. Oh, that is that thingy. <laughs> Painting. It's a pain ting. Survived. I, I, this, there's no way this thing survived. I'm sorry. As I started, it seemed that the pain, surrounding room began to blur until the painting was in focus. Fancied I could hear the creaks and whisper of Defoe Manor's hallways. I felt that bizarre urge to reach out and touch the painting. Let me guess, touching the painting brings you back to that place. Oh, there's one here too. Just backyard. I'll be back in just a second. Need to refill my drink here. All right, I'm back. I asked this before, but is the stream just getting like an infinite loading circle from anybody else? Because it does for me sometimes, but if it's only my preview that's doing that, I guess it's not a problem. Dead already. Office door was locked. Oh my God. Hmm. Oh, come on. Stokazola. Free framed Vincent's advertisements with three brands of soft drink. Decorated the wall. They were originals, they were probably quite valuable. Pub quiz machine. Piece of white cardboard. Out of order. 
I didn't drink. There was no bartender. I couldn't reach the bottles. So many things took me in the way of completing that request. Lame. Think of how many letters I could save if I could just not have to type door every time. It hurts. <laughs> it hurts a bit. Excuse me? It hurts. Well, it hurts, so I, I can't open the door. It hurts, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts. Appear to be locked. Well, deadbolts hurt, too. Probably needed a key. Crap. Lockpicks, pills, lump of meat! I still have that delicious, nutritious meat. Oh, come on. Open the door. So is this just always, oh. Everything went better than expected. But yeah, the thing where it doesn't load is probably because of that ultra low latency. Open door. There's no reply. Truly such a gentleman, he only picks the locks of people's doors he knows. Up! <laughs> I took another pill. Some door in particular I'm looking for or something. Also, it can't be healthy to eat like 20,000 anxiety pills in one day. Not sure they're quite meant to work like that. Oh, go to the painting? Well, I guess I didn't finish here. Come on. It was neither stuck nor locked. After several minutes, I was pretty sure I'd succeeded in picking the lock. The door still refused to open. Less healthy to dwell in Slendy Land. True. I figured the painting would just take you to the other world, and it's like, oh. But, but, but. I needed to not be in there, but whatever. Do you think Reddit learned to dress from Shelby? I don't know. All right, I do have the the walkthrough for this one, but I haven't been looking at it because this one has not been annoying. Oops. 
touch the painting. Step closer, I could feel a sound becoming muffled, my head spinning. As if we're about to faint, my hands, pulled by invisible string, reached out towards the clumsy brush strokes. July 28th, AD 1821. William Defoe is 15 years old today. He's excitedly putting the finishing touches on a painting with the father commented encouragingly. The first time he's ever been supportive of Matthew's artistic leanings. Matthew's now convinced that his father's lifting from the mysterious depression that's plagued him for as long as either of them can remember. Touch the cow. Do it now. Now he intends to take the painting absolutely perfect before showing it again. Art-hating murder dad. Even worse than a regular murder dad. Master Matthew, Sir Roderick has requested your presence in the trophy room. Thank you, James. And if you would be so kind to inform him that I will be retiring for the night. Very good, James. Oh, he's a butler now, too. That accent is how you know somebody's a butler. They're born that way. Let me introduce you to my son, Matthew. Hello. This is my friend, Mr. Smith. He's an expert on African tribal art. Well, just a scholar. Hardly even that. Just someone with an interest in the subject. And he has offered to assist with the figurine that I took back from my travels. Why did he murder him with this? This seems like such a bad murder weapon. I wasn't where you had a family, Sir Roderick. Is your wife home too? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Regrettably, Belinda is no longer with us. Oh, I'm sorry. Quite all right. You couldn't have known. She succumbed to illness shortly, shortly after Matthew was born. Finish the painting I showed you, Father. Oh, good. Well, Mr. Smith, what do you think of this piece? It's an intriguing little puzzler, actually. The design is reminiscent of a few Central African tribal gods I'm aware of. But to be honest, I've never seen anything quite like this before. May I ask how you acquired it? I'm glad you asked. It was 20 years ago, when I was a younger man, on my first travels to the Dark Continent. We were travelling aboard the west coast when our bearers spotted a ship that had run aground. It was an English clipper named the Sea Angel. In a short expla exploration, it revealed that every single crewman had just disappeared. Of course, we immediately sent a letter to the nearest embassy to report the finding. The point is, is the lowest deck of the ship. I found this very figurine you see here today. What an extraordinary tale. But how do you account for this being an African tribal carving on a British vessel? You were confused as you are. It was a slave trading vessel, but there must have been a Negro in the crew. It's been a personal mystery of mine ever since. I was hoping you could shed a little light on the matter. His head caves in when he talks sometimes. But there is more to tell. I haven't even begun to recount the strange events that have surrounded this artifact. Dun dun dun. Would you care for a glass of brandy? Thank you, that would be most kind. Matthew, fetch the brandy from the kitchen. Some glasses. Yes, father. Oh shit. Aw. <laughs> Look at those knives. <laughs> Look at the knives. <laughs> He's just got a machete in the kitchen, you know. Matthew had no purpose for it and he didn't want to interfere with other people's possessions. locked as always. There's a substantial gap of about an inch at the bottom of the door. So 
selection of knives are arranged conveniently behind the sideboard. One of them was Sir Roderick's old jungle machete. Would you like to keep there? Some sort of joke. I guess that answers my question. So tough, well-used brown leather apron. Matthew wondered which member of the staff had been using it. A smoked mask, the sort of thing that would be used by metal workers. Hung from the west wall, the gardener liked to keep it there as some kind of souvenir from his younger days. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna put this welder's mask on the wall. Well, wait, it's the 1800s. Why is why is there a welder's mask? All right, I'm supposed to get the brandy. I'd completely forgotten. Bottle is almost full. Sir Roderick had been drinking less and less lately. Matthew taking the brandy bottle. Blah blah. blah. Oh, hello. You haven't tried to speak to me in a while. Bang, bang. I did another painting today. I showed it to father and he said it was promising. I keep telling, trying to tell him about you, but he never listens. You haven't knocked for me so long, I was beginning to wonder. Bang, bang. What's that? You want me to kill father? I'm not sure how I'd get through the door. You want... He wants to see my painting, huh? We'll just ignore that. Matthew wanted to show his painting to his friend first. Okay. Oh, that's the painting on the thing. Yep. Pantenton. Matthew doubted he could have taken that with him. What do you mean? I'm pushing the painting out of the door, okay? Just give it back when you're finished. How dare you, sir? You intrude on my hospitality and insult my judgment. Why, well, I'm so mad my accent has completely changed. Get out of my house, you worm. You ever been so mad your accent changed? It's some real shit. Why did they hang the, the painting nicely after it had been apparently like in the murder cell? Wait, how did they even find it in the murder cellar? Father, what happened? I heard shouting. That old fool told me some rubbish about my figurine. Said the only tribe it could have come from all died in slavery years ago. Actually, they had the nerd to accuse me of buying from a forger. I'm sorry, Father. What are you apologizing for? Where's that damn brandy? I've got it here. Give it to me. I'll go back to my room, Father. Show me your painting. Father? You said you had a painting. Show it to me. I can't, Father. Why not? Be because, because. Come on, why not? Out with it. Because I gave it to boy behind the door. You fucked up now. I see. Father. Go back to your room, boy. I have to write my diary entry. Yes, Father. I have to write my plot convenient diary entries. The head movement's amazing. An hour of silence had passed, and Matthew grew concerned about his father. Strangely, the most disturbing thing had been Sir Roderick's reaction to Matthew mentioning the boy behind the door. In the past, raising this had usually provoked violent rage, instant flat denial. Matthew wondered what sort of anxiety was going through his father's mind. Smash! What was that? Father, what are you doing? Don't kill the weird boy behind the door.
Aw, oh, come on. I can fathom a purpose for the blades. Matthew is confused by his own reluctance. He had longed to see what was behind this door his entire life. Now, given the chance, he was struck with fear. He peered cautiously through and saw a set of rough stone steps leading down to some kind of basement. The murder basement! I should have done this the moment you came to this world, demon child. Why are you not chained up? May God forgive me for having part in your creation. Father, what are you doing? Do you see what you've done? I didn't want him to see this. Do you see what you've done? Father, no! I like the red blood. Whoa! Boo! Ah! That was not dad. That was not dad for a second there. He looks so lost in that painting. I don't think he even saw me come in. Alright. What? Is everything alright, Terry? Yes, everything's fine. Just for a moment I thought I saw. Never mind. Glad some. It seemed like something was making you terribly anxious. Well, thankfully, I have, I have infinite pills for this. I'm okay. I really am. Well, if you're sure. Do you notice what Roderick was hitting John Defoe with? Yeah, he was hitting him with the thing. That was already mentioned, but yeah. Then there was that other thing that was definitely not hitting him with that. Certain my mind was not playing tricks on me. I had been back there in the Defoe Manor looking through the eyes of William Defoe. I had seen the events that had created John Defoe. I saw his death at the hands of Sir Roderick, and that terrible violent end that would bring him back as that awful wraith. And somehow seeing that event it was so clear to me. You guys didn't see it? He was beating it with the idol. That was mentioned earlier. Um, it was clear to me that there was more to this goat than one stupid youth. There had been something very wrong about that idol, even before it was used to destroy John Defoe. A name stood out in my memory. Yeah, it is a little bit hard to tell because of the whole, the, the grayscale thing. But yeah, he used the idol. In fact, that was mentioned in, um, that was in Seven Days a Skeptic. Um, which might be, you might have forgotten, because that was a bit ago. Um, name stood out in my memory. The Sea Angel. Name of the ship in which Sir Roderick found the figurine. I had now had a lead. Professor, do you know anything about a ship called the Sea Angel? You know, it's funny you should mention that name. There's a really old wooden chisel among the minor Defoe artifacts. The word Sea Angel were carved into the handle. Where is this chisel? Out on display in the convention hall next to the dining room. What's this all about, Terry? Why am I British? It's just a little side project my clients want me to get into. Thank you for your help. No problem. Take care of yourself. Ooh, what's this? Cheap pine affair. Appears to be someone left a met. Yes, get the matchbox. This is somehow so much easier to play. Like you would think, text commands. Only one match left. I took it anyway. There's a thing. What do you mean? Paper. Look. Paper. That wasn't close. You're right there! Oh, come on. Paper. The page from a religious book I wasn't familiar with. I hear and close it with these notes. Victim 5, the child. The fifth man who desired judgment was the child. His father held the carving of the slave. That sounds a little familiar. The prince came to him, and the prince, and at once rightly pleased with what he had found, for the house of the child and his father already knew well the name of the king. And the prince watched the child watch. As the prince watched, the child was thrown down by his father and broken with the wood of the prince's soul. But as the child's body, mind, and soul began to drift apart, the prince held them together, and he said, You are the child, and I grant you power. For I see in you the potential that will grant my father, the king, 
his greatest wish. You shall be the. You shall not be of the land of technology nor the realm of magic, but of both. And thus we will. You shall form the bridge. I always knew the prince from Katamari was into some evil shit, but I never imagined. And across the bridge, the king shall bring his message to the men of technology through you, child. The bridge will come. I shall call you the bridge keeper. The prince touched the child, and he was the bridge keeper. His three aspects were granted power, so that his soul would join with the prince's soul in the wood of the tree. The bridge keeper rose up and threw down his father, his brother, and truly they'd know the name of the king. And into the house of his father went to the body and the mind of the bridge keeper. So I'm gonna guess the spooky dude is in fact the prince. Or the king. Eh, it seems like a prince. Because the prince was the one watching. Arc welding was invented in the late 1800s? Really? Huh. I would have expected a bit later than that. Maybe it's not inaccurate then. Um, can I go into the kitchen now or does it still hurt? Kitchen doors refuse to open. Well, at least they don't hurt. It's a plus in a way. Invented before gas welding, really? Huh. Open door. Nope. Doesn't understand the word cubbies. Um. Please tell me I'm not going up to the ceiling or the the, the stairs. To oh, oh! I know what I can do. I can open the uh, fire escape. Cause I've got a match. A single match. But that should be enough. Excuse me. What? Whoa! Was he riddled with bullet holes or something? Up. Oh. Okay. Well then. something in Animal Crossing. I hate these games with these cooldown timers. It makes me bleh. Alright, all done. Uh, look, slab. Blood was placed on top of the altar. Evidence of blasphemous rituals that had taken place here. Hey, Nyan I. Uh, it's a horror, uh, well, text-based adventure, kind of, but very Silent Hillish. Seems to be some alternate, like, evil religion stuff going on, which, again, is very Silent Hill. An odd occult symbol was called into the surface. Four equilateral triangles arranged into a star, contained within a single large circle. It's no mark of Samael, but it'll do. Uh, 
Absolutely no grass or plant life remained in the yard. The floor was well trodden and muddy blood splattered, marking a trail of some kind of sacrificial altar. Hooray. Use altar. Sacrifice. I don't understand the word sacrifice. This window two had been boarded up by an unknown hand. Do something with the altar. Leave meat. Use meat. Beat meat. Ugh. Inventory. Lockpicks, pills, lump of meat. I just need to take pills. Another pill. Oh. It's just a, just a nice little... Just a, just a happy little... Uh, oh! It's a wrench or something. It tells rear yard. It was more or less bare, except for an old workbench. And a fire escape running up to the building. The grass was extremely patchy and poorly maintained. Similarly, guests normally would be allowed up here. Look, table. Garden maintenance isn't. Ah! Get you sign the tail now. Can't imagine what sort of purpose this could so sort. Serve. Safe from head crabs. Probably not. We need a we need a metal pipe to protect us from the Silent Hill things. But uh... did I just say ladder? Ladder, not ladder. What? I'm back up the. Okay. Nobody pay any attention to the fact that I just pulled the fire alarm like an asshole. But yeah, it's it's fine. Can I open this door up here now? Excuse me. Stairs are the stairs are the true existential horror in the series. You know, the whole the thing with the spooky guy, that's one thing, but stairs. Stairs are the one true enemy that will never die. No matter how many evil rituals you do, it's always gonna be stairs. Crowbar was very old. I doubt it possesses the necessary strength to do that. What? B but that's the, th the thing you do with. Ah. Oh. They have the world's most useless crowbar. So this game contains. This game is rated S for graphic scene scenes of stairs. Oh my God, Trilby. <laughs> He's just physically incapable. Of operating stairs. Is there nothing that can stop the menace of stairs? Maybe I can open up this thing. Open the game. You have a crowbar. That's the key to everything. Ah. I need to go crazy. There we go. Crowbar was very. Oh, oh, come on. Used to open. Well, it hurts. Hmm. It was locked. I encounter ten minutes. 
That's a long time to be dicking around in here, honestly. What is this? Room was tiny. The absence of ventilation made the air very stuffy and thick. The only features were a safe and a table. <gasps> the safe! The safe! The safe appeared to be jammed shut. This came as something of a relief. Look, pain. I could somewhat sympathize with the clandestine graffiti artist. It was a rickety metal table with nothing on it save the prerequisite blood spots. Wait, what? Oh shit. Oh, it stays open! Well, that's convenient. Open safe. And caused a crack safe for some times, but my head has instantly went to automatic thievering mindset, like an old friend. The job was done, the safe opened, my nostalgia faded into puzzlement, and I found it was empty. Well, shit. For once, I'd like to crack a safe that actually contained something. Understandable. Is that so much to ask? Air in the hotel office was swimming with dust. The proprietors clearly felt that record keeping was more of a formality than a necessity. Uh. Useless piles of. Mm. Desk. There's virtually nothing on the desk, and I lacked a chair. Obviously, very little work was actually done here. Well, it might have something in it now that I've opened it, so, because it wouldn't open from that side of things. It's neat that you kind of do things on both sides of the situation here. There we go. For a hellscape, this, seems, this has been surprisingly safe so far. Not still closed. Alright, never mind. Oh, come on! Stupid door. Crowbarred. If you need something extra spicy for your next D and D campaign, try being a crowbard. If I had suspected the stress proved too much for the ancient crowbar, which is bent into uselessness, I discarded it. Rest in peace, crowbar. Yeah, the whispering sounds are great. Oh, hello, skeletons. How you doing? Judging by the smell, this room had probably not been ventured into for years. Desiccated corpses dangled from the ceiling, left to rot by some warped interior decorator. Ooh, trash bag. Oops. Look bag. A sack tied up at one end sat oozing foulness in the corner. Look bag. Your thought of that bag, what that bag could contain, made me feel ill. So containing four triangles and a square. So evidence of pri paganistic rituals, but the exact nature of them remained a mystery. So that's the thing we heard described earlier, the four equilateral triangles. Oops. Them bones, them bones, them dry bones, them bones, them bones. Them. More withered victims of the alternate hotel. Their advanced age indicates the dreadful sights that filled this place were by no means a recent addition. Bones. <laughs> it would have been wiser to leave the poor souls rest in peace. 
I was the pr I was the dude for a second there. Oh, I I was still the dude. Hello. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts too much to save. Sorry. There's some kind of chair going on here. We're in some kind of manger. That hurts. It hurts. I won't, I don't know what to tell you, but it definitely hurts. Neil. Understand the word Neil. It hurts. <laughs> I don't know how to stop hurting. It certainly does hurt. It hurts so much I gotta dance. This should end eventually. All right. Understand. It hurts. But why does it hurt? Is, is there something I'm supposed to do with this part? Understand the word help. This is just a random chance Easter egg. I don't think, I don't think I can do things. Yeah, I was just about to save since music mentioned it. Um, Trilby stuck in the manger. That's not helpful at all. Um, maybe it's because I was the spooky guy and I ended up here. Well, managed to crash it anyway. Uh, 
Yeah, I think... God damn. I'm like way back. Like, holy shit. Well, at least I can skip all the story stuff. Oh boy. So auto save is, this would be a cool feature to, to have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. Oh, come on, Trilby. This shouldn't take too long, but give me just a second here. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. So, open door. Yep, that does very much suck. Oops. It's cool that we got to see some of the Easter eggs, but yeah, frustrating. It feeds, but it also hurts. Not sure saving in there was the problem because I I just saved there because like I I was already stuck. Um. It's painting. Now now we have to be British again. I feel like I'm playing uh, Revenge of the Sunfish again. Press space bar, press space bar. I, did, I think that the website for that game went down. And uh, I was gonna play a bunch of those games from the. Er, get from Randy. I was gonna play a bunch of games from the Revenge of the Sunfish developer. Speed run strats. We're going for the no. We're going for the wrong, wrong warp. Yeah, I think. I mean, it might be back. Maybe it was just like a temporary thing. But if it's not, what do you mean? All right, gotta show the painting. Pony Island. Oh, I have a. I have a Pony Island video on my channel. I have a. I did a full playthrough. That that was fantastic, though. I love that. If you like the. The weird side of horror stuff. Definitely check out. Just Google Sir Tap Tap Pony Island. I'm sure you'll find it. Uh, it's really good. Oh, if you got a key for it, play it. Don't don't watch my video. Play it first. It, like if you want to see like a little bit of it to check it out. But uh, that's one of those things that's best played pretty blind. It's one of those games that screws with you. And it, it does a really good job. It does it actually tricked me in the video, like legitimately. I won't spoil how, but it, it was very good.
Oh, I was sure that would work. All right, since you missed that he was being beaten by the idol, you get to see it again. See, it was it was planned this whole time. Watch closely, because we see the prince, I assume. No, that actually looked like somebody different. Ah, yes, blah blah blah. That maybe he just looks different from the back, but he had like a staff. I mean, you can speed run anything as long as it has like a, a finishing condition. See, so, yeah, there probably is somebody who did. 1643? Sounds acceptable. Right, I'm definitely not getting to the last one tonight. I do I do really enjoy these. I'm definitely gonna play the last one. I'm not sure if it'll show up in next in tomorrow's stream or not though. Alright. That, that wasn't scripted. Okay. Huh. We're learning some things about this game because I had to play it twice though, so that's neat. Huh. I kind of like things like that in games, but it also makes me kind of feel like, oh no, what if I miss something cool? You got that bro bar, hell yeah. But that seemed like a one way to like to go to room, so like that does seem pretty cool unless you can just keep going there. I didn't have to do this in the alternate place at all. Wait, why did I do that? I know there was I knew there was nothing in there. It just seemed important. Which hell, maybe it is, because video games, but I don't know. Let's get some delicious meat, shall we? Close enough. Spooky left piano. Yep, that's that's still this. Wait, maybe if I Haha Logic Maybe. What is this? Professor Chahal's antique show was a spark, as this small venue would indicate. A couple of tables were laid out with various trinkets, and a charred rocking chair was the centerpiece. What a freaking joke! What? This is what I came here for? Some bottles? And that pickaxe? I, I recognize that. This is hardly an. This is just some random garbage. Random fire damage garbage sale. Oh, those are the three diaries, though. 
How did those escape? A couple of valuable antique books. I recognize one of them from Defoe's Mavericks Library, so those were unknown to me. Open bottle of some kind of soft drink on the end table. Oh, it's a health drink. On the display tables, I noticed two of the Defoe Manor artifacts. It's one of these knickknacks. Some manacles, no doubt, from the commander's basement stood out the most. Ugh. It's part of the chisel the professor had mentioned next to the pile of books on the north table. Take the drink with me. Something told me it would come in useful. A loud buzzing sound played to my ears. My vision began to cloud as I, my, <clears throat> see, see. as I reached over and laid my hand upon the tool. Oh no! More spooks? Somewhere in the Atlantic, July twenty-fifth, A.D. That seems very close to a certain date. Mabuta had been a great warrior. In battle, his skill was thought unmatched in all of Africa. He had respect, a great house, a slew of beautiful women. I thought it said a stew of beautiful women, which would be significantly less appealing. Children to make any father proud. But through just one mistake, it had all been torn away. His mistake was in standing by his beloved king when the invaders from the coastal kingdom arrived. Is he the prince? Now his great house was in ruin, his women raped, his children murdered. As for Mbuta, the worst fate of all, sold to the white men in exchange for weapons, shackled with his fellows in the hold of a slave ship. Mbuta was strong, perhaps he could have lived as a slave, but then came the sickness. He was in fact down with the sickness. A simple fever, no doubt gone the next day. The white men took no chances and threw him overboard. For days, Mbuta drifted, waiting for the black cloud of death to descend. Having lost everything, he now sought only the embrace of the deep, a welcome end to a life betrayed. But the end did not come then. Move him around, Captain. Voices unfamiliar, speaking in unknown language. Mbuta was suddenly terrified that slavers must have returned. And he was weak as a newborn, and could not move or speak. Looks like I picked him up just in time. Don't know how long we be drifting out here. Can't have last him much longer. Good lord. Look upon it, men. The greatest evidence we have of humanity's inherent evil. Never forget men, sailors such as I, did this, left this poor wretch to die. Slavers aren't sailors like you or I, Captain. No. We do not know how these devils have the audacity to call themselves human. Today there is no pride in being an Englishman. For our new, find our new passenger some quarters. Make him comfortable. Passenger captain. Every innocent who sets foot on my ship is a free man. Is there something about this policy you find questionable? Not at all, captain. No, these were not the slavers. The ship was different, less crowded with terrified black faces. Oops, I skipped one. Still frightened, but somewhat reassured, Mbuta passed out. Days passed, and Mbuta's health was restored. To have been rescued by the ship of these good white men had been a fantastic stroke of good fortune. He said it had been with the will of the gods that he should survive. The proper thanks were in order. An idol, that was the answer. If you could just find some suitable wood and a sharp blade, you could carve the finest idol of his life. Obviously things are about to get very bad. And Bo Buddha was talking to himself. When Buddha could not understand the white man's language, any communication would have to be nonverbal. Flip off whitey. Stand flip. Okay. Give boat. Give boat. Give. Get boat. 
Buddha doubted that that could be taken with him. Reasonable. Um, get chisel. Get barrel. What am I doing here? Look. See, Angel was a small clipper built for speed. It was late in the evening and there were few crewmen on deck. Okay. Use ladder. What? Okay. Point at boat. What are you trying to tell me? I don't understand. Point at barrel. Uh, Bow manor flashback. See. Okay. Walk to the man of the boat, point chisel to get the chisel. Oh. Right here, laddie? Oh, I see you want something to carve with. Here. Sailor handed Mabuto a sharp, almost brand new workman's chisel. Just bring it back when you're finished with it. Mali shipping. With the chisel and the wood of the crate, Buddha began to finally create his offering. After several hours, Buddha was very pleased with the result. A fine rendition of his kingdom's god of fertility and good fortune. All that remained now is to return the chisel. Everyone's dead now. Oh, and I'm that's that's my face. That was those were my eyes. Yeah, that was rude. That was just rude. The vision faded and I felt myself being hurled f forcefully back into the present day. That tall thin creature. That black clad ghoul was the, its significance to my was it any significance to my predicament? Why did it appear again and again throughout history to spread death and horror? There's no connection to the idol shape from Buddha's tribal deities. Tall man was no fertility god. Must have been connected to the wood of that crate somehow. So how are you supposed to swab the deck? Uh, there had been a name on that crate, and Buddha hadn't been able to read it. O'Malley. O'Malley! That's the, that's the Irish... That was that Irish chick's name on the space station. O'Malley Shippy. Or, oh, wait. No, that, that, that's the Irish chick from this timeline. Could the owner have been an ancestor of uh, Savohan? It was a flimsy possibility, but at this point it was my only lead. I resolved to s discuss this with Savohan at the earliest opportunity. Siobhan. Yeah, whatever. Uh, get the chisel, dude. Chisel could provide me no answers. I had other leads to follow. Wait, where are these manacled? Oh, there they are. If anything would retain some of John Defoe's malevolent power, these manacles would. I refuse to the touch them. Get the pickaxe! I doubt I would have taken that with me. Oh, for Pete's sake. What? There's a, there's a paper here. I recognize it being the same source as the... Under the... Oh, crap. I recognize the paper as being from the same source as under the painting in the lobby. 
Victim four, the slave. Fourth man who desired judgment was the slave who had not been who had not been brought for Horn's message, and who was tormented and who tormented the wood that was the prince's soul with a sharpened blade. So that box was the thing. The prince came to him and struck the slave down, and he knew the name of the king. The prince said, Not one of your household shall I leave alive, slave. For thrice now I have brought my warning, and any who still fail to heed to be named as fool and judged the most unworthy in our sight. Oh, you want to look at the manacles? They were blackened, but still recognizes the manacles from its basement. Okay. Finally! I've... Oh, it's you, Terry. I'd have known you... I thought you had been the serving staff at last. Yeah, just ignore the fact that I came through this locked door that had all of your trinkets in it. Do you want... Do you want... Do you want this meat? <laughs> Feed meat. Felt so foul that I could not even bring myself to raise it to my face. How has nobody noticed that I am carrying horrible rancid meat? Bathan? Was that the uh, entranceway person? I don't know. They're somewhere. They went places. It's fine. About Sea Angel. I almost said Sea Biscuit. That was hardly a relevant discussion point. What were you talking about? You just had a freaking flashback. What, what, what a stupid. The kitchen doors are used to open. Apparently I'm supposed to go to the bar. Ah, there you are. Have you seen any of the hotel staff anywhere? I'm afraid not, unless they're the dead people in the other place. Perhaps they go to bed early in these parts. I'll ask about Sea Biscuit. I don't think that would be relevant to- What's this guy's problem? Okay, you have to spell out her name. That's so stupid. How am I supposed to... You gotta call him, like, Jim. Ask Jim about Sea Angel. Do not, do not expect me to know, like, Svohan. I appreciate this sounding like an odd question, but trust me when I say it's important. Did your family run a shipping company in the 18th century? That is an odd question. But I do remember reading something about O'Malley shipping. I'd have to check my notes. I left them in my book bag. Could you meet me in my room about five minutes? I'm in 2A, next to a bed. Certainly, I'll put it there. Yeah, I've got the guide open, but I... So far, I've been doing pretty well without it, but... I, I guess it's not a real text adventure until something doesn't work for no apparent reason. Well, it's dark out now. Whoop! This is fine. Oh, come on, drill me. I do like his little hat icon, though. But yeah, we saw that briefly before we got soft locked. T 
two A. You got two Easter eggs at once. Yeah, I kind of noticed that. I think. I think it removed the, the the knife guy Easter egg, but not the other one. Must you always get right down to business? Yes. Come and sit down. Let's talk. Whoa! Now you're trying to get down to business. I'm not sure. That, I'm not sure. I'm interested in this kind of business. How are you feeling? We were a little worried about you. I have these moments of illness. What do you want to talk about? Defoe Manor. Oh. Kind of interests me. I was really into the media coverage of the incident at the time. I was definitely not there. A client of yours, when he wants a figurine, what does he know about it? Well, he has an interest in the occult. And there's some nonsense story going around about it. Something about the idol being a vessel for an evil ghost. I wasn't really paying attention. I love the face movements. Really? I don't remember hearing about that in any of the reports. No, you wouldn't. It wasn't widely. Oops. You heard the story that Trilby was in the house? Oops. <laughs> I could feel my cold sweat dripping down my spine. Every fiber of my being was concentrated and not, outward, not showing any outward signs of alarm. As Savohan spoke my secret name with wide-eyed enthusiasm. <laughs> maybe I shouldn't have called myself T. Rilby. You know, maybe a little better pseudonym next time. I don't believe it, but Simone Taylor said she, she says he saved her from the house. I think I think that's a little far fetched. That's exactly what a bed says. It says a ghost is one thing, but throwing Trilby into it just makes it seem silly. That's <laughs> definitely the least likely thing. I don't think a believe a bed believes in Trilby any more than he does in ghosts. He's so grounded in reality. Sensible attitude. Have you always been an antique dealer? Name yourself Fedora. I should just call myself Reddit. Let me put it another way. Have you ever been an antique dealer? Oh, I knew it. Outfit the hat. Terry Railby. You're him. You were in Defoe Manor. Did you see the, the numbers and the prints? It was on there for just a bit. There was something else. In this world, there was always something bitter, more glamorous, just below the surface. Or better, something better, more glamorous below the surface. Will you take me with you? Listen to me, there's nothing glamorous about what I do. I live in the shadows that threaten to consume me every single day. If you prefer this further, you're going to walk straight into one. Wait, what are you talking about? There's something extremely dangerous in this hotel. I don't know what it is, but... Oh, two, two, 287. 287 on Undercover Cop. Oh no! Scream, run! Um, kick! Kick! He's close enough! He was close enough! He was totally close enough! I freaking kicked him like a horse! What was that? Oh, who was that? Oh, that was Savoyan! <laughs> Oops, sorry. Did you see that? Oh, 28-7. <laughs> freaking kicked her like a horse. Who does that? She would probably be safe on her bed while I continued my investigation. Yeah, 28, yeah, 7, 28, or, yeah, British numbers. <laughs> well, now that I knocked you unconscious, let's look around your room and just... <laughs> This is a completely standard hotel room, equipped with bed, sofa, and television. Uh, look safe. Small bedside safe. Phone sat on top. Get phone. I doubt that. I doubt I could have taken that with me. Oh, is it like a, it's like a dial, like old people phone. Okay, I understand. I was like, wait a minute. What do you mean you can't take a phone? That's like the exact thing they're meant for. But then I remember in the before times. Did you kids know that phones used to have wires coming out of them at all times, not just when they're being charged? It was a strange and scary time. What do you mean? Oh, just pick the safe, Trilby. Oh. That would not that would not have been polite. You just kicked her in the face with both feet. 
I don't think opening the safe is the most impolite thing. Oh, look at man. Oh, that might have been a good idea. Yeah, my parents actually still have an old rotary. Actually, I don't know if we still have it. We used to have a rotary phone in the solarium. It was just, it was just there because it looked nice. We never used it, but it was technically functional. I don't think they have a landline anymore. Or wait, I think they do. They have the landline for some business reason. Look, TV. Oh, color television. Well, how fancy. Sitting on the edge of the counter. What is the bat? Oh, open. Under the circumstances, Sivohan probably wouldn't mind. A few textbooks, a half empty water bottle, and a large folder marked O'Malley Family History. There we go. Flip through the pages until I reach information relevant to the 18th century. Read the discoveries out loud. Uh, Liverpool based O'Malley Shipping Company ran for three generations of family in the 18th century until the loss of their clippers. The owner at the time, Jacob O'Malley, placed the blame somewhat rashly on a shipping crate, which the family legend had to be haunted and had been on the ship at the time. It's a freaking box, man! Just get rid of it if it's haunted. There are numerous tales of bizarre events surrounding the crate, and the story of the crate's origin is no less mysterious. It's a crate! Throw it overboard! It's, it's just one crate! It goes that a strange young man came to a carpenter's in a dockyard with a very expensive looking harpsichord, which he insisted to be smashed up and the wood be used for whatever purpose the carpenter desired. Not suspicious at all. He refused to leave until the instrument had been utterly broken into its component parts in front of his eyes, and the wood had been made into crates for O'Malley shipping. Suspicious. When pressed for his name, the man identified himself as Jack Freehorn. We've heard that name too. The Rooms of Jack Freehorn, July 28th. Again with the July 28th. So, what trifle have you been waiting with your father's money on now, Jack? What does it look like? It looks like a virginal. A harpsichord, actually, in the Flemish style. Dad. Quite old, quite expensive. Well, I suppose I should be grateful that something's distracting you from the occult for once. I fear you may be speaking too soon, my friend. Oh, God damn it, son. Oh, God, I should have known. You and your silly obsession. So, what devilry inhabits this magnificent instrument? This instrument as a whole is for the most part untainted by the ethereal realm, but its keys are what sparks my interest. Unusually, they've been carved from centuries-old English oak. And that's the interesting part. I will not be disheartened by that sharp tongue of yours. The wood has gone through many incarnations before being incorporated into this device. Items of furniture, building material. In fact, just over 200 years ago, it was part of a wall. How could anyone possibly know this? A wall of a certain inn on a well-traveled road in Wales. The unicorn? I'm so pleased you remember. I can hardly forget it, the way you've been obsessing quite heavily over it of late. Your correspondence persists in fulfilling your head with rubbish about ghosts and demons. I count myself very lucky to have tracked down even but a small piece of that ho hostel hostelry. I know I've already told you some of the wonderful stories attached to it. I'm pretty sure this wood, this wood should probably be, well I guess it must be a very well taken care of wood. Since we made a fair share of mysterious happenings. The usual batch of strange noises, sudden madness, and inexplicable deaths. See sense, my friend. This curiosity of things for all things ungodly has no doubt already befouled your immortal soul. Yeah. You are a fine well fellow, Wilbur, but you have not a drop of romance in your body. Now stop browbeating me for inqu my inquiring mind and let us take dinner. That night, Jack was stirred from his bed by the sound of music emanating from his new instrument. He listened to the haunting, melancholy tune and felt his stomach roll unexpectedly with fear. Who's down there? Wilbur, is that you? You, you bought a haunted piano and now you're like, who could possibly be haunting me? 
Jack Freehorn was a man of modest means and desired little for comfort. The only pieces of furniture to speak of were a bed and a desk. Nope. I'm just going back to bed. It's fine. What? What? Disorganized collection of writings pertaining to the occult, particularly the strange events that occurred surrounding the unicorn in the 16th century. Only oh, can't read the papers. Note the whispering. The tall man was. See, I said look, Prince, and yeah, that's definitely his name. The tall man was playing a haunting melody on the harpic chord, except for his hands. His body was completely still. His arms are clearly moving as well, but... Hey, I'm trying to fucking sleep here. Jack could not take a step further because he realized with a lurch he recognized the dark figure that stood at the keys. He'd read of the strange entity that occurred frequently in stories surrounding the Unicorn Inn and the objects that were later constructed from its wood. He knew with absolute certainty that the tall man would destroy him were he not destroyed first. Okay. I don't understand the word destroy. Okay. Scream. Scrim. I'm going back to bed. <laughs> Did you see that? His head was gone! Oh, I think he was just facing. I think he just looks like his head- He looked decapitated, but that's just the back of his head. It just blends in with a wall because it's monochrome. That was a good spook, even if not actually a spook. Good accidental spook. Get, get, get out of my house. Even, even in these ancient times, stairs are a wily foe. Jack was not about to attempt to fight that creature unarmed. Throw the candle. What do you mean? What do you mean that doesn't make sense? Do you have some sort of weapon or something? Uh, pillow fight! Letters, notes, papers. Ooh, a flintlock pistol! Hell yeah! Jack took the gun with him. <laughs> the word bitch. Shoot. Sh don't shit him. Jack saw no reason to engage in violence? Excuse me? There is like a grand murderer face here and... Whatever. You won't take me, demon. I I'm pretty sure he will, unfortunately. Oh. <laughs> Whoops. Wilbur? Well, shit. Oh god, no. But I could have sworn. You! I know you. You have. F. Oh god. Please forgive me, Your Majesty, for my transgressions. I'm a worthless craven fool, not worth a second of your precious time. I beg you, spare me. I will redeem myself from my offense. I will be yours forever, my body, mind, and soul. Thank you, my lord. Thank you. All of that for a piano. Come on, man. This may have been with the same Jack Freehorn who went on to form a bizarre religious cult. The depraved group of pagan worshippers were spoken of with much derision from conventional society. My latest flashback, my knowledge of the history of the Cursed Wood gained another step. Before the crate, it had been a harpsichord. Sometime before the harpsichord, it had been some sort of hostelry in Wales. An inn called the Unicorn. Why did that ring a bell somewhere in my recent memory? Definitely seen something in the Clowbrin Hotel that was linked to the place, but where? Is it Bohan? Oh! 
Let me guess, number two. Victim three, oh. Hold on, gonna sneeze. You know that thing where you know you're gonna sneeze and you think too much about going to sneeze and you don't sneeze? Yeah, that happened. Victim three, Freehorn. He doesn't have a special name, he's just Freehorn. The third man who desired judgment was Freehorn, who had brought those who had made luxuries from the wood that was the prince's soul. The prince came and struck down the lover of Freehorn, and Freehorn knew the name of the king. Huh, well, there's the theory. <laughs> I guess that it's not really a theory, that's just right there. Yatsu did a play through these games on his personal channel. And Freehorn said, I know you now, O Prince, who was the arrogant man, and I anticipate your wish, and I will devote myself to spreading the teachings you have taught me and the love of our king. And the prince was satisfied, and Freehorn called all those who would listen, and they performed an order of the blessed agonies that would work to redeem the follies of man of technology. Okay. I don't recall seeing anything unicorn related. Did anybody see any My Little Pony figures somewhere? There's something just, just subtly creepy about this place just being un unfurnished and everything. Stairs. Why did it have to be stairs? And what is this gap here? That is extremely unsafe and dangerous. Why would that be there? Well, maybe not extremely, but it's actually no, with no railings. Yeah, that's pretty dangerous. And we're back here. Hi, Flayed Corpse. How you doing? Somewhere to the west, I heard a familiar sound of a door being unlocked. Hooray! Lankman? <gasps> he was the thing! He was the prince. Well, shit. Crispy critters. What had once been a kitchen was now some kind of torture room. I found myself wondering whether it was used for extracting information or merely to entertain the alternate hotel's hellish proprietor. Interesting imprint of blood on the north wall, suggesting that some flayed victim had been hurled against it. Ray of unpleasant looking utensils hung from a series of hooks drooling fresh blood down the wall. Horribly tormented soul was still lying on the central counter, limbs arranged oddly from spasms of agony. The oven, still remnant of the kitchen's former usage, been stained from the inside with desperate handprints. Emergency door refused to budge, it appeared to be jammed. Oh. Soul window looked out in an orange tinted backyard in a state of advanced disrepair. I love how this door is like not even here. We still have to open it. This looks safe. Yeah. This concludes the text of the notes found in the hotel. The time of missing trophy remains innocent in action.
Rip. Eaten by bugs. Well, shit, indeed. Ugh. My left hand types much faster than my right. Um. Use meat. There you go. Grimzilla had been abandoned for some time. A large section of the floor was worn away. The insects were too busy fighting each other for a mouthful of rancid flesh to notice me. These two individuals had met with sticky ends down here. One of them had been almost completely picked clean by the beetles. The other... The other I noticed was heavily decayed except for its hand, which is fresh and pink. I if this had something to do with the puddle of water it was lying in. Far corner of the room, there was a puddle of water. Great bit of drips and bubbles, and a curious color to it. The drops seemed to glow with their own illumination. It was having a strange effect on a nearby corpse. I have Speedy Cola. I love Speedy Cola. I've got the nibbly that only hands can satisfy. Oh, come on. Swig of the beverage. I almost feel the caffeine trying to to heat up my brain. Hmm. I don't have anything to carry it in, I guess. Wait, what? What was that? I took another anxiety pill and then I the anxiety lift, but it did not. By unending concern, I realized the decay of the Altlet Hotel had spread. Either to me and the, or the pills, and they no longer worked? I had to find a way to restore their effect, or at least another method of calming myself. Uh, drink water! It's almost as if the water was drawing me to it. I like a scrabbling thing on my mind with a chisel to a painting. Or am I like a beckoning siren? I couldn't help myself. I crouched down and dipped my hand in, felt uncommonly refreshing, and brought an amount to my lips, my unhygienic surroundings forgotten. The pleasant feeling of stimulant, simultaneous coolness and warmth spread through my stomach. I realized that the water had some sort of rejuvenating effect. I had no explanation for this, but at the time, I didn't care. The water was really speedy cola. I was beginning to feel, in the back of my mind, the familiar tickling sensation indicated a reality shift. So I sw <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, it's, I'm shifting reality. I know that feeling now. I swiftly scooped a few drops of liquid into my pill bottle, shaking it through the remaining pills. So I fixed my pills, I guess. No murder bugs here. Hotel cellar was lit up with a single spotlight and seemed almost completely bare. So the garbage boxes. Okay, open boxes. It contained nothing but chipped crockery and old newspapers. I had no interest in them. My children need wine! Recent vintage, but not an unpleasant one. Why would you... Oh, come on, man. You're an adventure game, and there's only one bottle left. That's obviously a clue, you you, you colossal moron. Hmm. Doesn't seem very murdery in here. I had no interest... Oh, come on, man. Everybody gets the munchies. That's okay. Sorry, I'm so sorry for the Owen. <laughs> this blessed cardboard you can craft into religious items. Emergency door. The hotel room is deserted. Whatever. So the hotel staff is gone. Probably, definitely not murdered by Mr. Buttface. He only eats blood lunch. I'm so hungry without blood lunch, I don't even know what to do. Oh, Terry, it's you. Have you seen Savan? I was about to ask you that. 
What did you do to the girl? I hope you don't intend her to seduce her away from my service. Abed, I need you to understand. You, I, and Savohan are all in critical danger. Something evil in this hotel and it's closing in fast. He's good, definitely going to believe this. Mr. Railby, I've been over this hotel several times. Bought from us, there's absolutely nothing here. And that's pretty weird. Please keep your fairy stories in the playroom where they belong. Okay. Do you want some do you want some blood lunch? Can I give him my pills? He need, he, need, he needs to calm the hell down. What do you mean? Don't tell me I have to ask a bud. A bud about you. A bed? Oh, right, a bed. What do you mean? What? Did I misspell something? Oh. oh come on, I'll just look in the frickin' thing. Ask a bed about unicorn? What do you mean? Uh. But, but it was the unicorn inn. Man, do you know anything about an inn called the unicorn? <laughs> Ah, you know, it's my shingle. I picked it up as a curiosity in an antique fair a couple of years ago. It's all the way back to the Elizabethan period, from what I understand. I just can't find a buyer for the damn thing. I don't suppose you got any clients who might have a use for it. Possibly. Do I have your permission to examine it? Of course. I may have to touch it to assess the texture. By all means, do so. As long as you're not going to test its strength over your knee or anything. Maybe. Did you bump something, Parker? Hmm. Ancient shingle. Could this be the same unicorn mentioned by Jack Freehorn? Buzzing in my ears manifested as I expected the shingle. What do you mean shingle? That looks like a sign Shingle design was a simple one of a unicorn's head in half profile painted with average ability on a dark oak backing Let's press my fingertips to it. However, the design seems to extrude from its backing like a hologram and seemed to draw closer to my vision it was filled with wood grain and mediocre brush strokes <laughs> That feeling when, you're, when your vision is filled with mediocre breaststrokes. You can vaguely detect the professor speaking to me. At the very edge of my hearing, but at the same time I realized I was already gone. Alright, this is number two. Somewhere in Wales, July... T <laughs> yeah, July 28th. 1500s? Oh boy. Owen Somerset. Somerset. Have we heard that? Traveling merchant, on his way back from his wife and family in London, having concluded some business dealings in Credigian. I don't even know. Caught suddenly in a summer storm, he spied an inn by the side of the road and marveled at his good fortune. Faith, tis an evil storm that blights the storm to scar tonight. Oi, I must have all almighty on my side to find so close to the inn as it broke out. I perhaps. It was probably too late for me to continue. For to bleh. it was probably too late to continue riding. Even as the storm cleared, Owen decided to inquire for a room to the rest of the night. You got a room, Governor? Owen didn't think that relevant then. Owen doubted that he could have taken that with him. Shingle is an English thing for a business sign, huh? What do you mean, ask about- just- 
It would be rude to barge into the bedroom without first inquiring about the innkeeper's permission. Oh, come on. In oh, you gotta use the innkeeper. Oh my gosh, this is... Good evening, sir. Will it be possible to secure a bed for the night? Be wiser man than I. Go from this place and never return. I? What? There is a curse upon this inn. I will not have an innocent doomed to the same fate as I. Okay. Wait, oh, we heard, we heard this story. Didn't we hear the story at the beginning? The storm? The, the dude? This is that mangled dude from the, the, the staircase, maybe. <laughs> Owen decided he looked as normal as ever. Oh, come on. Why did I type open? I'm just so used to opening. Ink Eeper. It would have been more polite to move closer to the- Oh my god! Come on. I have plenty of gold to pay for me board. The devil cannot be bought off, my friend. What devil? What was the nature of this course? This inn was built by my father 20 years ago. From the wood of a fallen oak, he stumbled upon an island north of here. He noticed human bones scattered around, but did not heed them. The inn has been a curse on old bloodline ever since. Then get rid of it! Why are these people so stupid? Madness and death becomes those who pay, stay here. This time last year it claimed my father. Soon I'm certain it will claim me. So why do you remain? I do not believe in fleeing the mistakes of the past. Because you're an idiot. After all my wills that my family must pay for our errors. Then this I accept. But I would not see another suffer for our sins. Leave now before the shadows take you. <laughs> now that he is stupid, he is southern. And yeah, that kind of slipped in there. So I will face it for fables. And even less than rod and after sundown to move the downpour. Let me a room and I shall take responsibility for my own well-being. Will you insist? Not only will I insist, I will pay whatever price you ask. Go then, take the upstairs room. And if you remain by the morn, you shall pay nothing at all. Alright. That was sort of easy. Pen. Some, some Satan designs on the cabinet. That's nice. <clears throat> Slightly decorative wooden dresser stood in the corner. Some tiny ass beds. Beds were s simple peasant fare. The mattress is no doubt stuffed with prickly straw. But they would have to suffice. Owen laid himself down, intending only to test the bed's softness. But in his exhaustion, he quickly succumbed to sleep. I keep meaning to do more voices, but I need to like, I need to like name and plan them because I, I just end up forgetting them or don't know which voice to do. But note which, how was a drawer slightly decadent? It's got little symbols on it. But if you ever like notice a voice I do in a video that you like, let me know because I can like, what I've been meaning to do is like name the voices and like record little samples of them so I can keep track and like maybe do them again. I do like the little British voice though. In the early hours of the morning, something jolted Owen from his slumber. A piercing sound? No, a piercing smell. Oh, we're slightly on fire. Nothing seemed to be burning in the bedroom, so the smoke had to be coming from downstairs.
Oh, just just immediately by the door. That's not suspicious at all. A blaze that begins set in front of the door. By whom? The innkeeper? P on fire. <laughs> I'd call the British voice Owen Somerset. That would be a good one. Uh, open the door. Owen was not close enough to use either of the doors. Hmm. Look. Unicorn was small but secure, constructed with combination of stone and English oak. The only furniture in the reception room was a bar and a bench for seating. Someone had lit a fire by the door, filling the inn with a burning smell. Well, let's, let's go back to bed. Under the circumstances, returning to sleep would be impossible. Are you sure about that? Owen returned it. Intended to remain on the dry side of the wall. But, but, but there's fire. Being, I, I would say being wet is better than being on fire. I don't know about you, Owen. Well, I'd actually rather be on fire, Gulf. <laughs> too, too tired. Yes, just gotta go back to bed. Oh, that's a good idea. Get a, get a blanket. Oh, come on. Owen took the sheet with him, presumably comfort, for comfort. Ah, whatever. I guess I'll put out the fire. Up with the stairs. That didn't even make sense. Oh God, it's the dude, isn't it? What in gold? What in gold's name? Oh gold! It's him! It's the innkeeper! What kind of? Who could have? Oh! Dead. <laughs> Once again I returned, disoriented from my vision. It's closing in on the source of this madness. The innkeeper had said that the wood come from, came from a tree on an island. Could that have been Clubber Island? Given what I was seeing, it seemed like. Valid, if worrying, possibility. <laughs> Impaled straight through the head, through the whole rest of him. Save. I'll save as soon as we're out of dialogue. Besides that, it seemed no other. I had no other leads. What to do? I was determined not to let the trail end there. There was just a single clue, and there's a piece of paper. Thanks, thanks, tall man. Thanks for giving me the paper. Thanks. In fact, let me, let me, let me make a note in, um, wasn't there another voice that I did that was kind of all right? That was the, the, the posh voice. Let me, I need to, I'm going to remind myself. Whoa, I have a lot of emails. Um, God damn it. No, reminder. Um, innkeeper. <clears throat> the posh voice was that that was in the second one right or was that the start of this one which game was that in I think that was the start of this one yeah mouth sweet uh not yet is that a horror like game uh um Hold on a second, I'm doing too many things at once. Um, RPG horror game. I might play that tomorrow night actually, because I'm doing another extra long stream tomorrow night. Um, probably not quite as long as this one, because um, I have work on Monday. But um, I'm gonna be playing uh, Miyazo or something, the other game by the Mad Father developer. It's another RPG maker horror thing. Um, yeah, mouth sweet. I, I might check it. Let me. Well, I already got inbox open, so let me just leave a reminder. How long is it? Do you know? Uh, 
Because it would be good to do uh, some short games as well. Like an hour? Okay, that's good. Because yeah, there was some stuff like Gingiva that I meant to do. Oh yeah, but, but Spooptober, what is that? Wait, did I not look at the paper? I don't think I looked at the paper. Okay, let's look at the paper. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, but I think Spooktober is going to continue into November. It's gonna be Spoop Spoop Temper. Yeah. Spooptober, sure. But yeah, because I have I just have too many horror games, and I enjoy this a lot. Um, giant font, font thing. I think the font was only for Gingiva. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with Middens, unfortunately. But there's also the Witch's House, and I've got a bunch of other stuff to play. But yeah, I'll probably just keep doing the horror streams for a bit, because I really do enjoy them, and I didn't get to use all of November. So we're going to have some Spoopvember. Trilby, now you're following a trail. Go to the roof if you wish to proceed, Lankman. Well, victim 2, the innkeeper. Not suspicious at all that these are in the same document. The second man who desired judgment was the innkeeper, who had bought the wood of the tree and built it for, and built from it his house. The prince came to him and his guest, and he struck the innkeeper down, and the innkeeper knew the name of the king. The prince turned to the innkeeper's guest, and he said, You I shall not let live, for once I have made this warning, and still my soul aches for what is done to the wood that is my soul. And I will spare no man who injures me in this way. But he just slept there, dude. And the innkeeper's guest knew the name of the king. Well then. Gingiva tomorrow? Um, I'm not entirely sure. I kind of want to play Middens first, if I can get that working. I'm definitely going to play the Mad Father thing. And other than that, I'll just kind of see what we cover. I was hoping to do a f multiple short things, but Mouth Sweet sounds like a good thing if we can get that in just an hour. Is Gin Gingiva's like two or three hours, I think, right? Three hours? Um, the reception desk is a cheap find of no, it. Porcelain leg. Get leg. I think Middens and Gingiva might be their own streams the leg with me. I think this is going to be entries from a diary July 2, Felicia, and I should force. Wait, never mind. This can't be him. This, this, this is this is him talking about this in, I guess. Never mind. The yeah, Middens and Gingiva. I'll figure out. I'll make sure they're working and I'll make them their own streams. Um, and maybe we'll do something shorter. Does anyone know how long the witch's house is? I think that might be a longish one. I'm trying to find a, a couple, like, pretty short ones, like an hour tops, to fill in after the, uh, the Mad Father, uh, devs other game. Alright, I gotta take Bill. Another Bill. It's not that long to beat an hour. Wait, Gingiva or Witch's, Witch's Brew? Oh wait, Witch's House is four or five hours? Hmm. And it's not a big deal if I do Gingiva before Middens. Midnight Scenes. Wait, what? What do you mean? Oh. Maybe I need to put the leg on the thing. There we go. Oh, come on. Drill me, please. 
Also, I'll probably have to dedicate some later stream to uh, the last game in this series, too. Bless the left leg. Midnight scenes is like a 20 minute... Do you mean 20 minute, or... 20 minute? That sounds good, then. Joza, love me, hello. Yes. Excuse me. Excuse. Man, not man. That could be. That was Half Life was or two was pretty. Wait, that was a Half Life one thing though. But still, um... <laughs> well, I can't keep the head. Though maybe it's just indicating that the prince isn't human. It'd be nice if they had some visual indication of which doors could be open or something. And I guess the little, there's kind of like blood trails around the arms of the crosses. I guess it's supposed to be little stigmata marks, maybe. Yes, hello. Thank you for taking up my entire table. Say hi. Say hi. Yes. Say hi. Parker is extremely cute. Oh, there's a thing. Oh, come on. Get leg. I took the leg. Porcelain body parts were made with a truly obsessive care for detail. The ends were presumably the, where the organ would connect to the rest of the body were point, painted a lurid red. What, what do you mean? You can look hand, but you can't take hand. You have to take arm. Hello. He's just sitting right up, right up in my grill. Do you need something? It's kind of giving me bad father vibes with the whole mannequin situation. I don't want to talk to you anymore. I'm southern now. Not to get me a. If you're not gonna give me a drink, you can shove off. There's no. I don't drink. There's no bartender. G give. What are you doing? Give speedy cola. I wasn't sure how to. What do you? Mean? Cola 
Speedy Kohler. I'm from the upper Midwest now. Give Speedy Cola. Or actually, what what is the accent where it's like Kohler, like an A, like there's an R in there? What do you mean? Uh, give a bed, Speedy, Speedy Cola. What? Okay. You got any legs in here? No? Ask about the head. What head? Porcelain head appeared to be that of a woman. A bed appeared transfixed by its empty gaze. What the hell? I would not have noticed that he had... Like, I see the white thing, kind of. But. Gonna ask a bed about a head. May I borrow that head, Professor? <laughs> oh, I see. You took one companion of mine. Now you want another. I bet it's just a head. What could you possibly need it for? What? Do, do, do neither of you see the unusualness of the situation? You don't understand. No one understands me. Get me a drink, and then we'll talk. Okay, fine. He's southern now. It's, don't don't question it. Whatever, man. Oh, he probably wants that wine that I took told Trilby to take to open or to, to f Yeah, he probably wants that wine bottle that Trilby refused to take earlier because he's a freaking putz. Parker, what are you doing? That does not look. His position does not look natural. He's like hunched up here. He's like, I'm here too. Oh. No more meat. They already ate the meat. <laughs> I figured he wanted the cola because that was at his thing earlier. In video games, anyone, thirsty people will do absolutely any, it hurts. It hurts? Well, sorry, that door hurts, so. It hurts! I wasn't close enough. Oh, okay, it stopped hurting. It, it doesn't hurt anymore, it's okay. I'm gonna save again in case that stupid thing happens. Yeah, I like it when it says it hurts. That's that's a good one. Professor. Now he's gone. Ah, oh, and he took the head with him. Is he at the spooky one? No. Well, oh god, no. He shifted. Well, rip. Is his pants gone? Or were his pants just black or brown? Well, I, I, I gotta take this. That's no way to get ahead in life. Pulled the head out of the stump, trying not to think about the wet cracking noise this caused. Ah, oh, delightful. Even Parker is grossed out. Well, rip. The bed's drunken misery had caused him to shift to the dark hotel. Oh, I see. The jolly man of whom I had grown fond. Why did you grow fond of him? Lay decapitated on the floor. Was the Fahan's disappearance? I was truly alone. 
professor had known nothing about the horror. He was blameless and ignorant of any matter involving the Defoe Manor or a cursed idol, but it seemed my dark captor cared little for these facts. Oops. Aw, oh, crap. I missed whatever he just said. Sorry. Um. Hmm. I need one more arm. And you got a spare arm? You sweep with a beverage. You got my brain. Hmm. No. Anybody got an arm? Any of these toilets? arm in there you need you need arms whatever man I already checked the rooms and I don't think none of the none of the porcelain parts other than that one have been in the alternate hotel And that one started out here. Oh, come on. Three C, all right. Trilby! Stairs. probably get to well I think next weekend I'll get to the last one of these games oh oh it's her room I get it take door completely standard hotel room with blah 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 this prince guy is one thing but stairs man nothing stops stairs stairs were the real villain in uh, in PT crazy no beer and no TV make Homer something something oh, come on. All right, gotta go crazy don't mind if I do there we go There we go. We put her back. The body was intact. For reasons I couldn't explain, I sensed that something had changed back in the real world. What kind of ridiculous looking locking mechanism is this? <laughs> eh, it's fine. Dummy was not rebuilt. There doesn't seem to be any immediate effect. She was here before Savohan, so I have no idea. Oh. Father, why? Father, why? Father, why? It hurts. 
I guess you're confined to this thing because of the chains. Siobhan. Oh, hello. There's a note. I just, I just re instinctively type open. Open the paper. Whoa. <laughs> dun dun dun. Blubberin Island, July 18th. Oh wow, only a year before the last one? A sturdy tree this. Took us from dawn to dusk, but we finally have it down. I'm tired, father. Twas indeed clever of us to investigate this island, eh, boy? Never seen such a gigantic oak, nor do I expect to again. But its wood shall keep us in the business of carpentry for years to come. How do they chop it above human height? Father, those stones, do you think there was once a house here? It matters not. Why must you always look everywhere but at what matters? Why must you chop everywhere but at human chop height? Is something troubling you, father? Oh. It's the prince. Uh. Father, why? Boyle could only watch paralyzed as a demon tore into his father. Yeah. This monstrous man, tall and thin to an inhuman degree, tore at Boyle's father, father's lifeless body with some kind of metal staff. Boyle had to do something. It would be suicide to attack the tall man and him. I said throw a rock. Oh, come on, get... I hit him with a rock. Obviously this will stop him. Why didn't you kill him? All of the things, all of the things could have been avoided if you just killed that kid. Come on, man. Trilby. Savon? Oh, we're in alternate Silent Hill again. Oh god, thank god, I thought it was all alone. What happened to you? I don't know. After you knocked me out in my room, I woke up and everything was like this. I'm sorry, I horse kicked you. The hotel's ruined. There's blood everywhere. I saw this horrible man. Tall, thin, long black coat. You know him? Enough to know you're lucky to be alive. He didn't notice me, so I ran up here to hide. How'd you get past the doll? What doll? Trilby, what the hell is going on? I told you what would happen if you followed me into the shadows. This isn't your problem. Take these. Just have these pills. What are these? Tranquilizer pills. Take one. When you calm down, the hotel will go back to normal. Believable. Won't you need them? I don't need to run away anymore. What the hell? Ex excuse me? Where are you going? I know enough now. I know where the wood came from. Perhaps I can find a way to end this. Why don't you just give her like one pill? So I was right. The cursed wood came from Clarebrun Island. What good does that knowledge do me? Wait a second. I never got around to reading the letter I got out of that rock. Trilby, very close to ending this. Meet me in the hotel basement. I must show you my discovery, Linkman. The other page is one of those religious papers. The Book of Victims, Victim 1, The Woodcutter. First of those against whom the prince sought vengeance was the woodcutter. He who had held the axe that first felled the tree. The prince came to him and his son, and he struck the woodcutter down. The woodcutter knew the name of the king. The prince turned to the woodcutter's son, and he said, You, I shall let you live, for you, for you are young and are of the innocent, and that you may go among your people and tell them of what I, what I will rot. The woodcutter's son fled and told all of what he had seen, but the men of technology were arrogant, and his words were unheeded. So I guess his world is the magic one, and we're the technology world. Save. Oops. Right. 
Hopefully we should be getting pretty close to the end of this one. I'm having a lot of fun. My voice is starting to get a little bit scratchy here. Oh, I just noticed the, the, the unfinished top floor of the hotel. It looks just like these things. seem to lead to some sort of tunnel that gradually expands to an underground cavern. Can I drink the water? I must drink the water. I don't need to anymore, if you say so. I just saved like three seconds ago, but sure. Oh! Oh shit, it's the tree! this here? This is some sort of cavern dug out of the rock beneath the hotel. It seems to be in a constant state of flux, shifting back and forth between the real world and its dark twin. Well, certainly the gigantic stump in the middle of the floor had something to do with this. This is it. I was certain the remains of the tree that Boyle and his father cut down. Its wood later used to construct an inn, harpsichord, shipping crate, and an idol. I feel that same scrabbling in my mind that I had just before all the visions. This time it was the stump itself that seemed to be beckoning me closer. When I touch my wood. Whoa. Crowden Peninsula, July 28th, 55 BC! Okay then. Tabadath, the Celtic, Celtic druid, awaits the return of his friend and colleague, Galdwin. It brings news of the invasion of Anglesey by the Roman Suetonius Pal Palinus. Having fallen out of favor with his fellows for certain radical beliefs and activities, Cabaladath lives in solitude in this remote forest clearing and prefers not to, prefers not to travel himself. <laughs> it's not that said idiot, not idle. But, uh, you, said, you bring news? The foreigners have landed. They would not be deterred by our sorcery. sorcery. All is lost. Oh, certain are you. They are making their ways across the land, eliminating resistance. Even you, out here, will be brought down within days. I'm sorry, Calvadath. The great withers of Alice bowed so easily to this brash foreign power. Do not hang your head yet, my friend. Perhaps activities for which I was ostracized could yet spell an answer. What are you talking about? Do you know my dealings with the ethereal realm? Uh-oh. I know what you claim. There exists some otherworldly territory populated by demons and creatures of magic. And that you... Kadabath could somehow commune with these creatures. Come inside, and I shall explain. Oh. Hello, creepy manger. Kadabath, what is this madness? In my dealings with the ethereal realm, I have learned of many powerful demons and el elementals. There is one spoken of only reluctantly, a beast possessing of awesome power. You plan to summon a demon? The most terrible of them all, who strikes fear into even the most unflappable of creatures I have spoken with. Seems excessive. A pain elemental, indeed, the only pain elemental, ruler of a desolate wasteland where none venture. Invulnerable, hugely potent beast that feeds on the agony of others. And today is his day. The day when the boundaries between the realms weaken, and he glimpses our world. To bring him at that point should be simple. 
Even if you could conjure such a thing, how would you have it defend our land? I have much knowledge in the ways of magic. With the correct bindings, any demon can be forced to my will. I completed the preparations while I waited for your turn. All that remains is the summoning. Cabadeth, it pains me to see you would build your hopes on such nonsense. Be silent and watch! You shall see your nonsense soon enough. This hall of death, and by the light of Belenus' gift, I summon you. I bring you gifts to mark their path. I feed you with pain. I call you with madness. I summon you with the greatest loss. And I bind you by your true name, Chzo. By the gods. I've reached to you through the voids, Chizo. I command you by your true name. Show yourself. Capadath, please stop this. Show yourself. Hello. By Tadunas, it's huge. It is larger than I anticipated. Chizo must obey by the rules of magic. It is bound. I can command it. Yeah. Oh. I don't think so. It is far more powerful than I thought! Galden, help me! Forgive me, Kabadath. No! Galden, I beg you! Don't let it take me alive! Rip. Jizo, of course, has no use for meat. It feeds on pain. It does not kill its prisoners. Kadabath's agony was a particularly rare morsel, and Chizo measured it, ensured it would last. His soul was placed inside an oak sapling on the side of his old home, to grant his body immortality. For five centuries as the tree grew, he knew torment beyond even his most depraved imaginings. By then, his body was warped, and his mind long fallen to soulless dementia. He was Chizo's, utterly and completely his slave. Trilby! Sivan? You were supposed to leave! I couldn't. I just... I mean, the professor, he's dead! I know. He was killed by the shadows. Just like they'll kill you if you don't get away from here. What is this place? This cave is the center of the re reality shift. The stump is what's causing it all. How? It is the vessel for the soul of the tall man. Hello, third person. Aw, oh, shit. The acolyte of Chizo. Linkman. Nice to see a friendly face. Or is it? Amazing, isn't it? Of all the things Sir Roderick could have used to murder his son, he chose that idol. Blazing the soul of John Devoe into the woods alongside Cabadaths. Infusing the poor retard with Chizo's magic, allowing to come back infinitely more powerful than before. Certainly pretty lucky. Lucky. Chizo had to wait 2,000 years for that opportunity. The opportunity to blend magic and science in a single entity. The opportunity to create the bridge. What are you talking about? The bridge between the realms over which Chizo will cross into our universe and purify mankind. Ah, oh, shit. Our order has waited 2,000 years. Aw, oh, you bitch. You're not with the Ministry of Occultism. <laughs> Ministry of Occultism still makes me giggle. 200 years ago, the prophet Jack Freehorn founded the Order of Blessed Agonies. Since then, we have grown, watched, and waited. It's only in recent years that the event foretold of the Book of the Chizo began to occur. It mentioned John Defoe. It mentioned you. Me? You were to be the one prophesied to, get, to guide the bridge keeper to his destiny. But you didn't finish the job. All three aspects of John Defoe had to be destroyed to create the bridge. Mind, body, and soul. He only destroyed his body. His soul and mind remained. Had I known about this, I wouldn't have even done that. That will truly disappoint my superiors. You're quite adamant that I tried to persuade you to join our cause to fulfill your foretold duty. Is that why you were helping me? The 
thought if I guided you through your visions and showed you the appropriate passages from our holy books, you'd understand the prophecy is real. You've honestly believed I'd join some insane cult just because hands you hand me some leaflets? Well, that's pretty much what cults do. Personally, no. Oh. A knife from my gut brought an explosion of ice cold agony. I heard the pitter patter of my blood on the rocky floor. Pain, surprise, and my exhaustion went together to cause immediate unconsciousness. Well, crap. I woke to find myself splayed upon the stump, blood still slowly leaking from my wound. Save. Okay. I injured Satan. I could barely move. My limbs refused to respond. I was weak as a newborn. Lots of being weak as a newborn in this game. Oh good, you're awake. I was afraid you'd miss this. What are you doing? After sagging your ineptitude in a default manner, the Order needed to nudge things along. We need a connection to the Chizo to demonstrate his coming. And today might be the only opportunity we have all year to summon the Tall Man. Crap, it's the 28th, isn't it? You're gonna bring that thing into our world? It's with the standard ritual of blessed agonies and an offering. After he takes your life, he'll be grateful to us. Then he will guide us to our destiny. So why did you stab me? What if I'm already dead by the time he gets here? You won't be. Men like you, Trilby, die on their own terms. They won't weakly let their life slip away from one of the knife wound. I think I should probably die then. Shush, can't be that has come to save. Yeah. What's this? What do I do with the Easter egg? Do I just not do anything and get an interesting game over? I call thee, Kabadath, to the wood that is your soul. I call thee from the north. Die? Not yet, but I was pretty close. Oh, come on. Call thee from the south, etc. Drink speedy cola. <laughs> it worked! I just. I'm dying on the floor, and I take a nice swig of speedy cola as the camera zooms in to show the label clearly. Amazing! <laughs> that, that's amazing. What else do I have in my image? I call thee from the south. Um, can I drink wine? <laughs> I flatter myself that I am too much of a professional to drown my sorrows. It's not the time for that. Get book. My attempts to move only made things worse. I felt a stab of pain and something snapped behind my eyes, filling my vision with spots. I called you from the west. I'm just gonna see this bad end that I assume is happening. I just die. <laughs> Reality is flits from realm to realm, tormented, confused. End this madness and bring thee to us. Pain was now replaced with an ice cold numbness that was spreading fast. The room was spinning before my eyes. End it, Catabath. Hi, Prince. Alright. Before I die, I need one more rush of that sweet, speedy cola. I present thee with the blessed agonies, mind, body, and soul. It's becoming harder and harder to breathe. Air rattled in and out of my lungs like a buzzsaw. Present thee with the guide failed in his duty for thee to judge. Come. Come. Hi. My vision was clouding around the edges. It seemed like my stubborn will to live 
Will was the only thing keeping me alive. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Oh. This concludes the text of the notes. Aww. I was hoping for something a little more interesting. Shouldn't reality have been merged with horribleness and everyone died? Oh, whatever. It hurts. I don't understand the word hurts. Attempts to move. I was losing blood steadily. My arms and legs were limp and unresponsive. I couldn't move. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Calm from all the things. Wait, is it spelling something on the walls? Yeah, it's just kind of blood. Hey, buddy. Aw, oh, come on. Oh, come on, just let me die. Dribbly is really bad at dying. That's some fizzy Eldritch Horror. Trilby's like the worst at dying I've ever seen. Even the guy in Kuroshi is better at dying than Trilby. Um. I died! <laughs> yes, I died. Come. I'm dead, bitch. What are you gonna do now? What? He's dead? No, that's not possible. Master? Master, please, no. Rip. No! <laughs> Rip. <laughs> Trilby? Whoa. Go back, Trilby. What the hell are you? Leave me alone. I'm dead. <laughs> Not yet. Not fully. Your mind and soul are drifting apart from your body. It's enough power. There's still enough time to pull them back. But you must have the will to return. Forget it. I've had enough. I did the assignments, made myself useful, lived myself up to the reputation that the Defoe Manor gave me. Today I gave everything I could. I still died. There's still work to be done. You've not yet completed your duty. I'm sick of duty. I'm sick of prophecy. Just let me sleep. Stronger men than you have tried to fight destiny. None succeeded. Past, present, future, all different faces of the same die, and few can see them all at once. But I can, and the future demands that you live. Return now. I have marked the path. Please just let it end. Pleading to me is useless. I'm just as much of a prisoner of fate as you are. The future of your actions of, are destined to bring about have already taken place. Without your part, I would not be here to restore you to life. So you see, by my mere presence, your decision is already made. Who are you? A murderer, and a madman, and a puppet of forces neither of us could possibly comprehend. Aw, oh, shit, I'm alive. Trilby, say something. What? You're alive. Oh, God. I didn't even know if I was doing it properly. But it works. You're alive. Where's Linkman? That tall man took him. 
He did something horrible to him. Then he took him away. Where's, where's my waistcoat? Shh, don't talk. I've already called for an ambulance. Let's get you back upstairs. But my men's fashion. Wait, you see that wooden idol? Yeah. Bring it with us. Why? Wrap it tightly in clothes and bring it with us. Don't let it touch your bare skin. Okay. Well, I guess we gotta shoot it off into space after all. Now it sits across from me. The reality shift had cleared up. We were free to leave. STP cleanup crew arrived with the ambulance. A trace of a bed of the hotel staff was found. Officially, they had been classified as unexplained disappearances. Lankman and the tall man seem to have also vanished, which does not surprise me in the least. Savan has... Savan? Whatever. Signed the Official Secrets Act. Last I heard, is staying with her parents to recuperate. She just leaves me to write up my notes. The idol that haunts my dreams, gazing at me across the desk. Should you at least put it in a thing? I was dead. Couldn't pretend I wasn't. No amount of CPR could have brought me back from where I was. So who did? The man in red? Where was he? I've done insane hallucination and brain death. Not important. I'm alive and that's all that matters. Just that. My destiny, the wretched, wretched statuette that I'm apparently fated to carry out. Every instinct in my being wants to burn it to ashes and grind them into the dirt, but I do not. Lincoln spoke of a prophecy that the destruction of John Defoe's soul would somehow help him and his order summon their dark god. If I destroy the idol, they win. But what else can I, can I do? Aw, oh, shit, but I did burn it! I certainly can't keep it. I know from experience that it leaks malevolent influence like a broken pipe leaks water. The only other option to hide it. Where can I hide such a thing to ensure it's never again found by human hands? Space! I shall have to think about this. <laughs> the day after July 28th. Fedora, man. Imagine if he was actually called Fedora. <laughs> the fulfillment of the prophecy continues. Shit. The ritual of the summoning of Chizou will go ahead. Events have been set in motion that cannot be stopped. Huh. Huh, that's that guy. We have the blood of the guide. Now I must wait. Wait and prepare. Or is that Link Linkman? Or... It's hard to tell in spooky sepia tone. <laughs> what is that? I at this time near can at this what at this time came a man for the land of technology, from his wisdom was great and the power of technology. So is the arrogant man. And so the eight and twentieth day of the seventh month of the year, the arrogant man, the king gazed upon the land of technology and saw the arrogant man spoke thus. O king, I beseech thee, for this land has become corrupt without your benevolent hand in the darkness you should involve us all. I demand you to cross the border between lands and make things right, for power is great. I have it in my power to control one, even as you do. And the king was rightly amused, for while the arrogant man's power is indeed great, the king's power is greater still. And the king said, I will not submit myself. Firstly, my power is far greater than yours, not yours command. Secondly, while my capabilities are better, it's impossible for me to enter the land of technology. For the border is a dark and treacherous ocean. I cannot will away. But I will this for you, O oh arrogant man, for all the bigness of your head there is still small enough to be spared the rigors of the dark ocean. I shall re recuse rescue you from the darkness of the land of technology. You shall live in my household where you learn humility. As the king said it, it was so, and the arrogant man crossed the ocean to the house of the king, who was brought before his majesty and said, Now you must repay me for the slight your arrogance caused me. Despite your insult, I love you as I loved every man and beast. Something about the heart. And the king took the body and mind of the arrogant man and separated them from his soul. In this place, he placed it in a great tree in the land of technology. That's the action he announced. Now you are the tree, and the tree is you, and the wood is your soul. With this gift of separation, your body shall not wither or die without your lesson, throughout your lessons. But should any man interfere with the tree that is your soul on the day that is mine, I shall lend you the power to confront them and strike them down with fitting vengeance. And he touched the arrogant man and filled his heart with the warming love. And then he knew the name of the king. And the prince and the court of the king bow and wept and slept with great praise of the king. 
Generous with wisdom. The books of Chizo and the books of the prince, chapter two. Speaking through Linkman, you can tell a lot of the text are complete pulse. Control these notes. <laughs> that, that sure is a face. Program by Yatsu Krashaw. So what's Yatsi not gonna do now that I guess Escapist has totally collapsed? Psst, there he is looking at the head. Like, yep, you're ahead. You've got a head, I've got a head. We're, we're two, we're like two breads and a biscuit. Two breads and a biscuit. What is this Final Fantasy music going on here? Hey lady, sorry I kinda horse kicked you. Like, was Trilby a horse in a prior life, or what, what was that about? Well, that is kind of a reference to the the arrogant man is Cabadath and all that crap. So, like, he was talking to... He was trying to bring over Jizo, who is the king, I guess. I guess the prince is Cabadath, I assume. The unicorn dropkick. <sighs> Well, that was Trilby's notes. Oh, that's the little idol on the thingy. Well, tomorrow at 2, we're going to start um, the Mad Father other game. Let me find the name of that real quick. Uh, Miyazo. We'll play that. And uh, that's made by the same guy as Mad Father. And so that should be really good. Oh, let's put chat above it. There you go. We'll start with that, and then we'll see. We'll do some other short stuff. Like that mouth suite sounded cool. I, I'll, I'll check that out right as soon as I end the stream. Happy twenty eighth, everybody! Three months too late, but it's still the twenty eighth. So don't touch any wooden idols, anybody. Just don't. Better just don't touch any wood at all. Especially not that wood. That's just inappropriate. Wow. Nine hour stream. I think this actually is my longest stream. I think this was actually longer than last year's Halloween stream. But tomorrow's net won't be as long because it's it'll be Sunday. Yeah, nine hours and about ten minutes. Wow. Miso? Yeah, it probably is. But yeah, it's like the spooky school thing. And Satan from the last game. Reddit Satan is in this in this next one. So that'll be cool. You want to use the same thumbnail from last stream? I'm not sure what you mean. Um, I'll probably just use one of Miyazo or something. Or Miso. Special Halloween logo. Oh, I think I... Did I make one? I honestly forget. I don't know. I'll, I'll throw something together. Oh, the Stranger Things thing? I think I might have that somewhere. I'm not sure if I still have that. Yeah, I don't know if I still have that on my PC. Miso. I'll, I'll find something to throw up for a thinger. <sighs> yeah, see you tomorrow, everybody, starting at 2. And uh, I don't, I'm not sure how long the next one will go. Not nine hours, not on a Sunday, but it'll be pretty cool. We'll start with this thing. We'll see Reddit Satan and uh, probably Mouth Sweet and maybe some other short stuff. Um, and then I'll, I'll just keep doing the spooky streams through November because I've got so many and I'll just never get to them if I just only do them on weekend streams in October. So I may as well just continue. Like I'll still, if I go through all of November with my spooky games, I'll probably still have stuff next October. So it's no worry. But yeah. Thanks a ton for watching everybody. That was a blast. Um, uh, special thanks to everybody who stayed through like this whole thing. Cause that was... 
even just to watch, that is a lot. So yeah, thanks a lot. Sun, Pariah, I think you were here for most of it. Music. Uh, yeah, I think... I think most of y'all stayed through, like, most of it at least. But yeah, that, that was a blast, and now I need to not be in a chair for a while. <laughs> See everybody tomorrow. And I can't believe we, we dropped less than point zero one frames. We dropped... 691 frames over nine hours. So I guess the Mediacom Malady, which I still have, I still have the image of, let me see it, there we go. We might never see this again. And I don't know how to feel about that because I kind of, I'll miss, I, I won't miss needing this, oh my. Why is the, why is the aspect ratio not locked? Uh, I'll, I won't miss having to use this, but I, I will, I will miss being able to use it. But yeah, see everybody. Oh, hey Peyton, you came at exactly the wrong time. A nine hour stream and you managed to log in just as I'm about to leave. But yes, tune in tomorrow though. I'll be streaming again at 2 central. I think I have typed too many messages. <laughs> uh...